it may be a Tuesday night, but in Louisville, Kentucky, it feels like a football Saturday for Louisville and Southern Miss. Dave Ragone and the high-flying Cardinals getting ready for one of the nation's best defenses in the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Defending champions of Conference USA, the 5 and 1 Louisville Cardinals at home to take on Southern Miss. Papa John Cardinal Stadium is all lit up, and we've got some place to go on a special Tuesday night edition of college football the Golden Eagles against the Louisville Cardinals. Hi, everyone, Rich Waltz along with Mark May. In this conference, this is a special game. Three of the last four winners of this game have gone on to win the conference championship. We've got a special player to watch at quarterback. Dave Ragone is big and talented, and I think he could have been a hog. You're going to like this guy. He's a tough quarterback. I'll tell you what, he wants me to want to put a helmet on again. He gets me <laughs> excited. But you look at Dave Ragone's numbers, very lofty, almost 1,600 yards passing, 10 touchdowns, six interceptions, but it's the intangibles that he brings to the game. He's not afraid to pull the ball down at 250 large and run with it. Here he'll take it around the corner, and instead of slide, He'll pick up the extra yardage. He'll go to a defensive back, swat him away, and even get more yardage on the play. But the other things that Dave Rigal brings to his teammates, that's why they love him and respect him. He'll put that shoulder down and run over the opposition. But Dave Rigal said, if I wanted to slide, I would have been a baseball player. But you know what? In the third quarter, he may bring out the first baseman's glove because he's facing a defense that will put a hurt on you. Look at these NCAA numbers. Traditionally, Jeff Bauer's Southern Miss team is always one of the best in the conference and the country. Second overall, it's a very good defense. And they're led by the rover, Chad Williams. When we spoke with Chad yesterday, he said, hey, Dave Ragone may come out and try to test our manhood, but I'll tell you what, after four or five whacks, he'll be sliding by the second quarter. <laughs> it is a very large game in Conference USA. Papa John Cardinal Stadium ready for this one. We'll start it with Brian Kenny. Brian? Rich, thank you very much. I'm with Mike Golick and Bill Curry taking shots at baseball. He's like you. Well, <laughs> as I bad mean, as come you on. Are. He's right. I mean, if you're going to slide, go play baseball. Uh, Bill, traditionally, this, uh, this settles the conference. Is still the case? Could be this year again? Well, I think that's a very interesting question because Southern Miss did a process much like Fresno is doing this year by playing a lot of tough schools the last five or six years. So when they went into this Conference USA, they were dominant. They were 21-2. and two. They won three out of the four first conference crowns. And then a year ago, they lost a big one in Hattiesburg, 48-29 to 29, to this Louisville team. And from that point to this, they've lost four out of six conference games. And so there seems to be like a sea change. So we've got the sage of the golden dome here i want to know if there's a changing of the guard well there, there may your wisdom just astounds me thank you very yeah. much well, I'm sure. <laughs> well it's going to rely on what mark may said is that the arm of dave ragone their big quarterback about 250 pounder completing 60 percent plus of his passes but He's not going to be able to do it alone. Their running back situation is nicked up a little bit. They've had some turnover problems, and you're going against a second-ranked defense in the country with only two seniors on the squad. So you got some young guys that are hungry to get after it. Terrell Paul, Roy McGee, their two best pass rushers, are going to get after it a little bit if they can stop that run. You say hungry. You're looking at the ribs that they well, had out there that. at the was, field. <laughs> Bill, now. you mentioned Fresno State. Pat Hill of Fresno State will join us at the half. We're ready for the first half of action. Southern Miss in Louisville. Dave Ragone is ready. Enjoy the first half, everybody. Welcome to the annual ESPN the Magazine Sports Mascot Picnic. Every year, pro and college mascots come from all over to talk about how much they love ESPN the Magazine and show off their free fleece pullovers. You know more mascots subscribe to ESPN the Magazine than any other sports magazine in the world? Hey, here's the college guys. Fellas, who's your ESPN the Magazine favorite? They're so into Dick Vitale. And every new subscriber gets this ESPN the Magazine fleece pullover absolutely free. These high quality fleece pullovers are extra large and roomy. Fits all shapes and sizes from devils to penguins. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues one year for just a dollar an issue. That's 71% off the newsstand price. Hey, if you're a sports mascot or simply a regular human who loves sports, pick up the phone and call for ESPN the magazine and your free fleece pullover. 1-800-607-5454. 
on a chilly night in Louisville, Kentucky. Southern Miss against Louisville in Conference USA. This Louisville team, always a high-flying team. John L. Smith has put up some big numbers since arriving here in his fourth season. 20 times they've been over 30 points in just the 42 games since Smith arrived. Moments ago, our Alex Flanagan caught up with Smith. Okay, I'm here with Coach John L. Smith. Coach, you are known for your powerful offenses, yet you only scored seven points in your last game. You come in, you're facing a tough Southern Miss defense. What's the game plan tonight to get that offense back on track? The biggest thing we've got to do, we've got to be able to run the ball some, but we can't afford to turn the football over. And when we get opportunities down in the red zone, we've got to put it in. And that until last week, you know, we've been 80% until last week. So when we get an opportunity, we're going to have to score with it. We can't give them any extra opportunities. Just play good football. Okay, Coach Smith, good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Rich, back up to you. All right, thanks, Alex. Jeff Bauer with his back to us, a guy that in his 11 years at Southern Miss has had a marvelous run at 70, 48, and 1. And he's anxious to get back to this Louisville team, which upset Southern Miss last year. And it was the, the key game that sent Louisville to a Conference USA championship. It says 50 degrees. Mark May, does it feel like 50 degrees? Not at all, Rich. I'll tell you what, I've played in a lot of games and been in some climate weather, and it's just wet and cold and windy, and it feels like it's about 30 degrees. And you can see the wind swirling, and they feel that it'll drop down to about 40 degrees with a wind chill down a little bit lower, down in the 30 degree range. Louisville won the toss, deferred. Southern Miss will get it. Tim Blackwell deep. Awaiting the Wade Talachka kick. Blackwell to a D. And now Southern Miss will come out and try to solve their offensive problems. Jeff Kelly is an outstanding quarterback, a three year starter, but he struggled in his last outing against Memphis. His skill players, and they'll go with the three receiver look Rocky Harrison, Danny Fowler, Kenneth Johnson. Dwayne Woods gets the start at the running back spot, and Bobby Gardner starts at tight end. There he is on Pepsi Vision. Say hello to Michael. There you go. Kelly, the senior, has led his school to two bowl wins. The 99 Liberty Bowl won the Mobile Bowl last year. To the air. And complete Kenneth Johnson, the sophomore. And he's got a first down, a 13-yard pickup. Up front, Southern Miss has had some problems. They do have a key man in Kendrick Key back in. Bridges and Jim Jimenez on the outside. Key and Tucker are the guards. Jim Hicks is the center. And some real problems across the line with this defensive line. Devon Thomas gets the start at one end. Dwayne White is a real load at the other end. Bobby LeFew and Scott Lopez at the tackle spots. On first and ten, this is Woods, and he's got a couple. The strength of this Louisville linebacking core is really spread out. Brown is the mo most athletic. Freitag is the anchor in the middle, and Chad Lee is the playmaker on the outside. The corners are good. Minkins and Galishaw, Young, Burns and Floyd, the strong safety and the free safety are pick and stick. There's Galishaw, a redshirt freshman on the corner. Louisville's pass defense is one of the best in the nation. Whistles and movement. And that's what you don't want to see by the defense. Just watch the ball. Very coachable. When the ball moves, you move. Offside, the defense. Five yard time, still second down. Keep an eye right here, Bobby LeFew right in the middle, just jumps offside instead of concentrating on the football. He's looking at hands, and a lot of nose tackles, a lot of defensive tackles look at hands at offensive linemen. I used to do that little trick, move my hand a little bit before the ball snapped, get him to jump offside. This is Woods again, and he's close to the first down, out to the 42-yard line. A flag on Louisville is not good news for John L. Smith. He should be accustomed to it, though, because his team last year was penalized most in the NCAA. They cleaned it up a bit this year. And that was something that they emphasized in concentration. Things, simple things like staying on sides, not being in motion offensively. And some of those things you can work on, and they have, and they've improved in those areas this season. Third and short. Kelly 
really going to keep it. It wasn't designed that way, and I think he's short of the first down. Chad Lee and Jeremy Freitag made the stop. And a nice job by Chad Lee of penetrating and not being fooled on this play and getting some push into the offensive backfield. Saw the big tackle, big guard, Torin Tucker pull around. Got a little push in there, but I'll tell you what, Coach Jeff Bauer's not happy. This is a situation where he needed to get a first down to keep his offense moving the change to keep the ball away from Louisville's offense. And he's got veteran skilled players there. Jeff Kelly is a three-year starter, the quarterback. Dwayne Woods is a senior, the running back. Mark Hallman's kick, Deion Branch from his 17. He escapes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Dave Ragone had a wonderful year last year, MVP offensively of Conference USA, and he, like Kelly, struggled his last time out against Colorado State. A three-receiver look. They'll spread it out. You've got on the outside Zeke Parker, Deion Branch, and Antoine Harris. Gent is a great tight end, and Tony Stallings is a veteran running back. Stallings, the senior, is what John L. Smith calls a blue-collar guy. Going. Going on the move, and he's got a man at Zeke Parker. Out to the 39, 13 yards on the pickup. Seventh different combination on the offensive line, and this is game seven. Evelyn Woodard are the tackles. Sims and Dardzinski are the guards. Dan Coons is the third different center to start for Louisville. Up front, Skyler McGee, Rayshon Jones, and Brian Evans. Terrell Paul, number 91 is the speed rusher. They like to get him on the edge. They'll stand him up and move him all over the place. Shotgun, Ragon. A mobile man for a big man, and it's incomplete. Fans here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium wanted a flag. They won't get it. The linebackers that Ragon will be staring across the line at are very good. Joe Henley, Rod Davis, and Roy McGee. McGee will be guarding Ronnie Gent. He'll be covering him man to man, at least in the early part, the tight end for Louisville. On the outsides, Leroy Johnson and Greg Brooks are the corners. Chad Williams, the leader of this defense, and Etrick Pruitt are the safeties. Cluster the defense trying to confuse the offense. Stallings first carry. And that's what Southern Miss does best. Swarm to the ball and give you a lot of looks. Brian Evans, the sophomore from Mobile, made the stop for Southern Miss. It's the speed and quickness of the Southern Miss defense. They're going to line up in a cluster up front, which means they'll put three, four, five guys in the middle. They'll jump around and move to try to confuse the offense to make Dave Ragone, the quarterback of Louisville, go up to the line of scrimmage and audible out of what he wants to do. But on the other side of the corner, when we spoke to Dave Ragone and the offensive coordinator, they want to come up and go a lot of first sound snaps. So look for that in this game. There's a quick snap. Here comes the blitz. Ragone doesn't see it. And down he goes. Well, he'll stay on his feet. That's how strong he is. Greg Brooks, the sophomore corner, at 5'11", 167, hit Ragone, who's 6'4", 250. But it's a sack nonetheless. And Dave Ragone didn't see Greg Brooks coming out of the top. Here he is. It's Whoop, right here. Keep an eye on that. It's a corner fire from the top of the screen. But look at he's only 5'11, 167. Dave goes 250. Get off me. It's like a gnat on an elephant's back. He can't even knock him down, but he does get the sack on the play. Wade Zalachka. Who had a punt blocked last week. This is Kent Johnson who lost the ball. Louisville's got it. fell on the ball and not much is going right for Jeff Bowers Golden Eagles Rich you must be sound on special teams Kenneth Johnson get away from it if it bounces like that or just catch it don't try to make a play the ball hits him it squirts out he's trying to look at it but it just comes too close you've got to step up keep your eye on that ball field it in you cannot let it bounce that close to your body that ball is oblong when it hits the ground it can go in any direction Mattingly the deep snapper recovered the fumble and now the Southern Miss defense is right back on the field Louisville from the Southern Miss 26. Ragone with time. Over 
over the middle broken up Zeke Parker the intended receiver and I think Chad Williams the senior safety from Birmingham made the play and what a magnificent job by Chad Williams of breaking on the ball they call him the rover he's really a free safety he keeps his eyes on quarterback Dave we're going once he winds up and his eyes are in his direction he's going to break on the ball because of the arm strength of the quarterback and that was just a phenomenal break in reaching out and knocking the ball away very rarely will you hear a coach say his best cover man is a safety <laughs> but that's true about Chad Williams and down goes Tony Stallings. Rod Davis, sophomore linebacker out of Gulfport, Mississippi, made the stop. Southern Miss's defense, year in and year out, always one of the best in the country. And they are, and they're very physical. They're very well coached. First-year coordinator Tyrone Nix has done an outstanding job with this defense. But what you're impressed by is the speed of this defense. Every position, tackle, end, linebacker, they swarm to the football. They try to get as many heads to the ball as possible. Ragon now on third down. The scramble. And get back to the 32. Flags go down, as does Ragon this time. Terrell Paul was on top of Ragon. That's obviously a holding against Louisville, but for Dave Ragon, when he is when he's at his best when he runs the football, it's outside of the pocket. Going up the middle of the defense. Holding, holding, the offense. Going up the middle of the defense is a tough road to go because you've got those 290, 300 pounders in the middle. This is a curious penalty to decline because it leaves Louisville in, albeit long distance, at least field goal range. It'll be a 48 yarder for Nathan Smith. His longest is 43. And had they accepted the holding penalty, it would have backed them up even further. See the wind swirling, the kick, long enough, and good. Into the wind, the sophomore Nathan Smith, the hometown kid, puts Louisville on the board first, 3-0 Cardinal. We're here for the bigger and better PepsiStuff.com game. We are? Just go to PepsiStuff.com and enter the code under the Pepsi cap to choose from over 500 music downloads from bands like Smash Mouth. Hey, I heard somebody say... Or win instant prizes like Sam Goody Music, EA Video Games, Drink Pepsi, or Mountain Dew to play. Hi. Who's staying for dinner? Play Pepsi Stuff, powered by Yahoo. Halloween. What the hell was that? The producers of House on Haunted Hill bring you the ultimate house of horror where there's death at every door, terror at every turn. We should get the hell out of here now. And a ghost in every room. We got company. 13 ghosts. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 26th. Own the Basic Instinct Special Limited Edition DVD packaged in a collectible see-through ice case with a free collectible pen and hot footage the director was forced to cut. She didn't like it too much. Also available, the Total Recall Special Edition DVD. Buy them both today. Nice wrench work, Chief. If more men would heed the call of the Y chromosome, maybe more of us would have three such faucets at our fingertips. Hot cold and Miller High Life he's a field goal kicker what's so amazing about a field goal it's 63 yards yeah. under yeah. Pressure. pressure look I got $40 says none of y'all can hit from half that distance you got it <laughs> guys uh believe you're up ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by the first one calorie cola that tastes more like a regular Pepsi One. This one's just right. Rich Waltz, Mark May, Alex Flanagan. Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville on the board first, 3 0 over Southern Miss. 
And a curious decision to decline the holding call. Louisville stayed in field goal range, and Smith hit his career long, a 48-yarder. And I guess Coach Jeff Bauer didn't want to give David Bowen one more chance for the football, as dangerous as he is as a quarterback. Tim Blackwell to a knee. Southern Miss will get it at their own 20-yard line. But I'll tell you what, Rich, I would take the chance, make them go for it on third and long, because obviously it takes them out of field goal and field goal opportunity with a long, long kick. Well, you give David Bowen the chance. That's a long way to go for a quarterback on third and long. It would have brought up about third down and about 20-22. There's your scoring drive. Yeah. And it came, of course, on the fumbled punt return that Chip Mattingly recovered. And here's a Southern Miss offense that has struggled. Jeff Kelly threw four interceptions last week against a good Memphis defense. And here he hits Leroy Handy for a completion, a seven-yard catch. It's a nice job by Leroy Handy. And you know, here's a player that's been the starter, and he's been kind of in the doghouse the last couple of weeks since he hasn't stepped up. He hasn't been starting, but he's been playing a lot. It's a nice job of going across the middle, curling, just sitting there. He knows he's going to get hit. The ball's tipped at the line of scrimmage, but it's wonderful concentration by Leroy Handy keeping his eye on the ball and bringing it in for the reception. Kelly, another quick throw, and another ball is tipped. Chad Lee got a hand on this one, the junior linebacker. Rich, that's two in a row. That's that's something that a quarterback should know better not to throw that ball low, particularly after you just had one tipped. You got lucky. You got away with one. But Chad Lee's one of those guys. He came in as an offensive lineman. They moved him to the defensive line. Now he's at linebacker. He's just Johnny on the spot. And it's just an outstanding job of keeping his eye on the football, sticking that mid out there and knocking it away. So then this face with third down now. And three. Inside screen, Chris Johnson. And Chris Johnson is loose. He's 40. Johnson will go. 73 yards. Touchdown, Kelly. Southern Miss. What a well designed play by the Southern Miss offense. Taking the crowd out of this game right away. But what a phenomenal job of execution by one, the wide receiver, to the offensive line, getting out, getting blocks, and wide receivers down the field to play. We'll take a look at it after the kick, but what a great job of execution on offense. And if you're looking for a play that will give your quarterback some confidence, which Kelly definitely needs, that's a great call. That little screen. And Johnson turns into a 73-yard touchdown completion. You can believe this. Quarterbacks like the short pass, long run. That's right. Hannah. The extra point. Southern Miss answers. Chris Johnson. And the Golden Eagles are on top. In a world of uncertainty, there will always be a need for those proud few who can prove they are a world apart. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. Even when a man has his toolbox handy, isn't it nice to turn to this all-purpose helper? The High Life man knows that if the Pharaohs had duct tape, the Sphinx would still have a nose. We salute you, duct tape. You help a man get to Miller time. Be a winner. Take one. You are KG. I am KG. The D's in the dime. Call an audible split belly. You are smart. I am smart. <laughs> Third and ten. Where's Lot? There he is. 18 yards out. Get it straight. Dude. Sega Sports, rated E for everyone. To us, it's college football, but to the people of Texas A&M, it's a way of life. Sidelines, Thursday nights at midnight, 9 Pacific, on ESPN. 7-3, Southern Miss on top of Louisville, downtown Louisville, Kentucky. And the hometown Cardinals took a quick 3-0 lead, but Southern Miss, on a big play, 
from that pair, Jeff Kelly, to a true freshman, Chris Johnson. When you designed a quick screen, you couldn't do a better job than this. Keep an eye on right here, Terrell Bowden. That's one. You're going to watch the offensive line. Jim Hicks, the center, is going to get out. You're going to watch the left guard. Kendrick Key's going to get a great block. And I want you to keep an eye on Torin Tuck. And right here, a big 300-pounder. He's going to lead the he's going to lead the parade down the field. Let's take a look at it. Chris Johnson does a great job. He comes underneath on the screen. There's your first block right there. There's your second block. Take it out, too. Down the field, right there. There's an offensive guard. Now watch big 76, Torin Tucker. He's going to lead the parade. Get out there. Give me a drum major. Just drive, big fella. That up, baby. And Chris Johnson just takes it into the house for the touchdown. This is a short kick designed for trouble, and it's a fair catch made. That's a heads up play by Ronnie Gent, the tight end. There's one of your big guys up front, Jeremy Bridges. Oh, you got to love it. And these guys love it because they know that they're never going to get their name called when they run 40 and 50 yards because a lineman never runs 40, 50 yards. If you have to, you're going to lose because somebody's going to beat you. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Alex? Well, you guys are going to notice that Dion Branch is not out on the field right now. They took him off into the locker room. against uh, The game against CSU, he hurt his right clavicle. It was a little sore but felt pretty good coming into the game. And then on a Louisville drive, he took a big hit to it and is kind of hurt. They're not sure whether it's his clavicle or if his neck but he is hurting. He kind of had tears in his eyes, was trying to shake it off, and just couldn't, so they took him to the locker room. Thanks, Alex. That is a big loss for Louisville. Stallings can't handle the pass. Dion Branch, 37 catches, four touchdowns, and more importantly, 105 yards per game. He was the guy that stretches the field and draws the double coverage that allows Ragone to find other wide receivers. And he's the guy that they need because he's their big play threat. They don't have that now in offense. They're looking for Zeke Park to be the complement receiver to take pressure off of Dion Branch. Now, I think Dave Ragone's really going to have to start going to Ronnie Gent, his tight end, and start using him a little bit more in this offense. It's been a rugged start so far for Ragone and the Cardinal offense. Remember, their three points came off a fumbled punt return. Lionel Gates getting his first carry. And Gates is stopped by Ettrick Pruitt, the sophomore out of Theodore, Alabama. And what they did is they confused the offense. Ettrick Pruitt is the free safety. You're going to keep an eye on him. He's going to sneak in up here. Keep an eye on Ettrick Pruitt. There he goes, close to the line of scrimmage. He's sneaking in there. He's sneaking in there. He's following the play. There he goes, straight up the field. No one blocked him. They crowded the line of scrimmage with eight people in the block box. Not enough blockers for the offensive line of the Louisville Cardinal to handle. How many different looks has Southern Miss given Louisville already? There's been about eight plays offensively, probably seven different looks. Third down long. We're going. Going deep, Antoine Harris. Antoine Harris is going to start kicking himself on this play. He beat the defender, got by the defensive back, Leroy Johnson, and this is exactly what you're looking for as a quarterback in Dave Ragone and as a wide receiver, Antron Harris. You beat the defensive back. You've got him by three steps. Catch the ball. The ball's right in his hands. That's a pretty pass by Dave Ragone. He put that ball right in the money. Talachka will punt. Remember, Ettrick Pruitt blocked a couple kicks last week for Southern Miss. They don't go after this one. And this one is caught by Kenneth Johnson. And Kenneth Johnson is wiped out the at the 33-yard line. 46 yards on the kick. No Thursday night college football, but boy, on Friday night, we get a chance to see David Carr and the Fresno State Bulldogs as they host Boise State. Carr and the Bulldogs with a miraculous come from behind win in the final seconds against Colorado State on Saturday. It's 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Friday night on ESPN. And how's Very this for a resume? Impressive. Very impressive. If you look at the senior quarterbacks in the country, he's at the top of the class. He will, he will be playing Sundays next year in the NFL. His coach, Pat Hill, will join the gang in the studio at halftime of our game. Dwayne Woods with the carry for Southern Miss. There is the youngest coordinator in college football, 29-year-old Tyro Nix, who was a great linebacker here at Southern Miss. And his first year as a defensive coordinator, he has done a marvelous job. What I like about Tyro Nix, he's a made guy. And what I mean is he coached linebackers, defensive line, defensive secondary. He's done it all. He knows it all. He was a coach at 22 years of age. Right when he finished his career, he took his helmet and gave him a clipboard. That's impressive. Dwayne Woods 
handoff is to, to the 40 yard line. His younger brother is Derek Nix. And the Southern Miss the really thought they would have him as a running back this year. If you're not familiar with this story, last year early in the Take season, he sprained an ankle and they gave him some antibiotics to ward off an infection and it gave him a kidney ailment and he battled that last year and it flared up again at the start of this year. He will redshirt this year. He is better. He's lifting weights and they feel he'll be back 100% next year. And that's great. And they could really use him at 1.9 per rush for this offense. The throw from Kelly is incomplete and Southern Miss will have to kick. And you can see that Nix is moving around, anxious to get back with it. He will not play this year. He'll have his senior season next year. That's got to be frustrating for that young man, but he's out there enjoying it, supporting his team, and he'll be ready next year. He'll be out on that field, but this offense desperately needs a solid running game, and without him, they just don't have it. He was an outstanding power runner. He ran over people. Number 23, Mark Holland on the Mark Holland to kick. Deep for the cards, number 80. And Zeke Parker. Zeke Parker. Deep for Louisville. Louisville apparently did not have enough guys on the field, and they're going to burn a timeout. John L. Smith wants to talk to somebody about that. 7 3 Southern Miss on top of Louisville. Back to Louisville after this. Honey, the one thing I need you to do today is open an Ameritrade account. Okay? Yeah. You know, he is a big boy. 68293. Ooh, you got a player down on the field, number 81, uh, Paul Norris. Single play by the firmer thighs, abs, and glutes. <laughs> <laughs> then during the Woodrow Wilson administration. Oh, there's a problem the back, I can hear it. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Open a cash account and get a free six-month premium membership to Morningstar.com. Some restrictions apply. Go to Ameritrade.com. This week on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey, Mike Madonna takes the stars to St. Louis, where they look to pay back last year's playoff sweep at the hands of Chris Pronger and the Blues. Stars Blues, Wednesday at 8 on ESPN. Get ready for NFL football on Thursday night. The Jaguars mark it out. And come back in, Jimmy Smith. Wide open to the touchdown. Send off Rob Johnson and his herd of hungry Buffalo. Bills, Jaguars, 8.30 Thursday on ESPN. 7-3, Southern Miss on top of Louisville. And the Cardinal didn't have too few men out there. They had too many, not, not just one too many. Yeah, I counted 13 when they were coming off the field. I started counting them. I said, not one too many. They had two too many guys. They had to call a timeout. Would that have been a double? Double infraction? Il no. <laughs> but they gave it a shot. Yeah, they did. Here's Hallman kicking to Parker. And Parker escapes one and is out to the 24-yard line. Southern Miss's defense has always been good under Jeff Bauer. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Not only Jeff Bauer, how about this defensive coordinator, Tyrone Nix? I mean, you, you look at this, and, you know, last year to this year, they lost so many starters, and look at, they're even better in some categories, and that's a lot to do with Tyrone Nix. Mark, they didn't just lose starters. They lost starters to the NFL. And that's what's impressive. Five guys from this team, last year's defense, are on NFL rosters, NFL teams in the NFL today. Ragone, quick throw to Harris, out to the 38-yard line. Last year's defense, one of the best in the country. Wow. Look at the, some of the starters who are now on NFL rosters. John Nix of the Cowboys last night forced a big fumble. Yeah, he won the game. He forced a fumble with Stephen Davis to just over two minutes to go in that football game. Dallas gets the ball back. They run it down. Emmett, 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 kick a field goal and win the game. And here you hire a 29-year-old defensive coordinator, and you say, keep up the tradition. And he's plugged a lot of new faces and new names in, and they have played well this year. Flags are down.
Good ball. False start. The offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And those are the penalties that really drive you crazy as a head coach. You know, they're simple penalties. Those penalties aren't physical pen penalties. They're mental penalties. And, you know, here you look at some of the players. First-year defensive starters off the Southern Miss team. And you look at these players that, you know, they're just youngsters right now. And the way that they've come together as a unit in such a short period of time, they're almost, they're probably better than the unit that they had last year with the seniors. That's one of the things is Lionel Gates carries it to the 33-yard line. When you hear people talk about Southern Miss's defense, you don't hear them talk about superstars or single names. It's always as a unit. They, they always have guys on the line, at linebackers in the secondary that contribute. And that's what you have to have. You have to play team defense. But they do have that one leader in Chad Williams out there. I mean, you know, he's the bell cow. He's the guy that everybody follows. But you know, they play tremendous team defense, and they're very well coached. Except for jumping off sides right there. <laughs> You can see Ragon is so tired of having his team flagged. He was pointing and pleading that this time it would be Southern Miss. Good ball. False start. The offense. Five yard penalty. That's why Ragon was, down. Was, yeah, was, was trying to sell his case. Yeah, he was pointing at Terrell Paul on the other side because he moved and he didn't realize that one of his guys moved first. Look at the penalties already. And, you know, three penalties, and that's kind of unacceptable. And all these penalties are mental penalties. You know, that, that hurts your offense. It puts your offense in a hole. Second and 19 kind of hole. There's a look at Williams. He was looking forward to a running battle with Dion Branch. And if you've just joined us, the wide receiver for the Louisville Cardinals has been taken to the locker room with what they think is a possible broken or sore collarbone. Lionel Gates with the carry. Rayshon Jones, the stop for Southern Miss. And what a wonderful job by defensive tackle Rayshon Jones of penetrating. They run the counter where they pull the left guard and left tackle from left to right. Rayshon Jones reads it and just penetrates behind the line of scrimmage and makes the tackle. That's a phenomenal job by Rayshon Jones of reading that play and then getting his position and making the tackle. We'll find out what John L. Smith has in the playbook for third down and 17. Ragone, pump fake, scrambling. And caught from behind by Jones. That's two plays in a row. That's back-to-back -back by Rayshon Jones. Great job of escaping by Dave Ragon, but the speed of this defense, we talked about it before, they can chase you down. Take another look at this. The protection breaks down. Dave Ragon stands in the pocket. He makes the pump fake now. There's no receiver open, so he makes a nifty move to get to the outside. But right here, he's got a beat on him, Rayshon Jones, and the speed of the defense. We talked about their speed in every position. Overall team defensive speed. And that's why the loss of Dion Branch really hurts Louisville. Because that's really Louisville's speed on the outside. Kenneth Johnson at the 30 breaks one tackle and is hit and dropped at the 39 yard line. 37 yards of the punt. Pardon the interruption, literally. Washington Post columnist Tony Kornheiser and Michael Wilbon. If you've ever heard Kornheiser's radio show, then you know it. This should be Sports Talk Radio at its best. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, tomorrow on ESPN. I think that should be a funny show. I know both of those guys, Wilbon and Kornheiser, were very they, funny, no, very intelligent guys. Were they good to you in your days in Washington? Up and down, up and down. Okay. But in my afterlife, in my broadcasting career, they've been funny. Well, they like you now. Huh? To the 41 yard line. It's a gain of two. Tim Blackwell with the carry for Southern Tim Miss. This, this, this Southern Miss offense, they've got to try to help their passing game. Running on first down, they need to get more than one and two yards. They average 1.9, a paltry 1.9 coming in. They need to get four and five yards on first down to help quarterback Jeff Kelly because the play action game, forget it. You're not going to respect it with this running game. It was an inside screen to Chris Johnson that went 73 yards for the touchdown tonight. And Kelly over the middle. He's got Leroy Handy inside the 45, down to the 43-yard line of Louisville, a 16-yard pickup. Nice move by Leroy Handy. Just an in move. It's a deep in move. But what he does, he reads the coverage, and as soon as the defensive back turns right there, he makes his break. Smart move. And as soon as he makes his break, he gets separation from the defense, which makes the play go. But that's a smart play. As soon as you go down and break, and the defender turns the shoulder, that's when you make your break. And that was just a smart play by Leroy Handy. Jeff Bauer said he'd like to see Handy play every play. That's the reason he took him out of the starting lineup last week. 
He responded with six catches against Memphis. He's back in the lineup this week. Kelly. Out of bounds. It'll be second down and ten. Wow. I didn't know where Jeff Kelly was throwing that ball. A little miscommunication between wide receiver and quarterback. In that situation, you're not going to throw that ball away. You've got a wide receiver that's one-on-one. -on -one, and Chris Johnson with your quarterback, there's a situation where you want to throw the ball to him. He just completely throws it out of bounds. Is there a smarter player in Conference USA than Jeff Kelly? There may not be a smarter player in the stadium than Jeff Kelly. Kelly is a second team academic All-American. He has breezed through Southern Miss and about to get his MBA. Tim Blackwell hit and dropped. Bobby LeFew and Michael Josiah is in who made the stop. Take a look at some of these numbers. Wow, that one right there, that, that gets me. I like the bottom one, top finance major in Mississippi. That's all of Mississippi in spring 2000. Well, the thing is, when I spoke with him yesterday, I asked him point blank, and I said, are you going to go into coaching or something? And he goes, nah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I've got other options. I said, well, I guess you probably do. He's a finance major. Third down and 11 now. Kelly came up short on that one. Rocky Harrison, the intended receiver. That ball was just point blank thrown behind his receiver, Rocky Harrison. The ball gets tipped a little bit at the line. It's behind his receiver. That's his third tip of the game. But look what the linemen of Louisville are doing. They're getting those big paws up there, knocking those balls down. And that was Chad Lee to get his hand up there. But you know, that's just a great job by Louisville. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Get in the passing lanes of the quarterback so he can't throw the ball or he cannot see his receivers. Allman into punt. And he'll try to angle this and then keep it away from Parker. Parker catches it at the six. And Zeke Parker breaking one of the rules of punt return he makes it pay off. We were on the same wavelength. I wanted to say one of the cardinal rules, but <laughs> way too easy. It's seven to three. Southern Miss on top of Louisville. And there's a flag down sitting at the 20-yard line. Jeff Bauer told us today that his Golden Eagles must eliminate mistakes. And that certainly was their demise last week against a very good Memphis team, especially on the defensive side. The thing is... Rich, the thing is, when you've got an outstanding defense, you can take a couple of chances on offense. Even though you make mistakes, when your defense is so stifling to an offense and they can put them in the hole and don't let them gain yards, you can take your chances on offense. You can even go through miscues on offense. But when you've got a great offensive coordinator, and this is a young, youngest one, youngest defensive coordinator in the country, youngest coordinator in the country, doing an outstanding job at 29 years of age, and he'll be a head coach in the next four or five years. Ragone on play action, wandering around near his end zone. Now he'll tuck it. He does not want to slide. And Rod Davis, the sophomore linebacker, whom Ragone outweighs by 12 pounds, runs him out of bounds. You should have given him a nickel for that free ride he gave him. Yeah, he's, he goes at 238, does uh, Rod Davis. But the key to this play is, without Deion Branch and there is a deep threat, the defensive secondary of Southern Mississippi is doing an outstanding job on the wide receiver of the Louisville offense. Quarterback Dave Ragone has no place to go with the ball. They're just shutting the wide receivers down. He has to run the football. A 13-yard pickup. That's been Louisville's most effective play so far in this first quarter. Whoa! Ragone falls on it at the three. And Rich, the reason why that happened, this is the third different starting center Dave Ragone in the Louisville offense has had this season. This thing started a 3-0 Louisville lead. It's gone downhill since for the Cardinals. Southern Miss on top of Louisville. We're done with one in Kentucky. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Now, 90 minutes. Leather seats. Automatic transmission. Nowadays, you'll hear people call this a truck. Well, a man knows a station wagon when he sees one. This car will only seat off-road action if the driver backs over a flower bed. 
if this vehicular masquerade represents the high life to which men are called. We should trade our trousers for skirts right now. How do you go from this to this in just one hour? With this, meet Edgemaster, the self-guided rolling edger. With Edgemaster, anyone can paint a razor-sharp edge around doors, windows, light switches, smoke detectors effortlessly. Look, when you paint, here's where the time goes. Edging. Edging is tedious, and the edges are everywhere. But Edgemaster has a built-in beveled edge that self-guides as you paint, so you can quickly, easily, effortlessly master every single edge. Simply load the roller, flip the Edgemaster guide in place, and watch how Edgemaster guides itself and paints along door and window moldings, thermostats, walls, and ceilings without getting so much as a drop of paint where it shouldn't be. With the Edgemaster, all the edging is fast and easy. Look again. It works on any edge. But how? Behind the scenes, Edgemaster is working for you. Its beveled guide plate rides along the edge you don't want to paint, so you can easily cut in the surface you do want to paint. Edgemaster works on any surface, at any angle, in any position, on every edge with any paint. With the Edgemaster, you can paint in no time, with no tape and no trouble. In fact, with Edgemaster, we guarantee you can paint any room in one hour or we'll buy it back. Through this special television offer, we'll send you the Edgemaster. Two Edgemaster rollers, painting guide, and tray for only $19.99. As a special bonus, call the 800 number right now and we'll triple the number of rollers and send you four more. A $20 value free, so you can paint as much as you want. You'll get the entire Edgemaster painting system and six rollers, a $40 value, along with our buy it back guarantee, all for the low price of just $19. Here's how to order. To order Edgemaster for only $19.99 plus $5.95 shipping and handling, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-735-0011. That's 1-800-735-0011. Or send a check or money order to the address listed. So call 1-800-735-0011 and order today. Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, one of the nicest college football facilities you will see. And right now, the Louisville Cardinals are not playing well. Henry Miller with the carry, and Louisville will have to punt. In our ESPN game track in the first quarter, a missed punt return. Kenneth Johnson had it bounce off of him. Chip Mattingly fell on it. And Nathan Smith converted a 48-yard field goal. And then the big play for Southern Miss. A true freshman, Chris Johnson, 73 yards with a Jeff Kelly pass, complimenting what has been a, an outstanding Southern Miss defense. And the defense is swarming. Chasing Dave are going down. He's caught by a defensive lineman, Rayshon Johnson. Third and 23. Flags down again. It has been a penalty-filled ball game so far for the Cardinals. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Penalty will be five yards. Still third down. I believe that's the third false start on this offense. I mean, this team has not played for 12 days. These are just mental penalties that you, you can't do this. This is just a mental aspect that you practice day in and day out. It's a snap count. Mark, normally when you hear about a team that is penalized a lot, you think about personal fouls and cheap shots after right. the ball. That's not the case with this Louisville team. No, these are these are things that you practice every day. Lagone's going to air it out. And he's got a man. Zeke Parker couldn't hold it. Lagone's fast at 10 and put over 80. Zeke Parker. I'll tell you one thing that I'm impressed about Dave Lagone. Not his running ability, but he has such a pretty pass. Zeke Parker on the outside, just a fly pattern, just runs straight down the field, but the ball's thrown behind him. He's got to reach back for it. That is a catchable ball. That is a ball that he's supposed to turn around, measure it, put those hands on it, and bring it down for the reception. There's the second long ball that Louisville has dropped. Wade Talachka from this very spot against Colorado State last week dropped the snap and had his kick blocked. And he gets this one off. Kenneth Johnson from the 42. And Johnson knocked out of bounds at the 31. Let's check in down below with Alex Flanagan. Alex? Well, you guys, kind of an interesting situation going on down here with Zion Branch. As I mentioned last game, he hurt his clavicle. It was a little sore. He got hit in this game, said it was sore. They've done x-rays. The trainer says he's fine, yet Dion uh, doesn't seem to want to play. He took off his pads. He says he's too sore, too tender, can't go back in. He was going to stay in the locker room and then just came back out on the field. As you guys may have seen, he doesn't have any pads on. And uh, nobody seems to be sure whether or not he's going to go back in or not. Rich? 
when John L. Smith sure would like to see him back in. Southern miss with the football. And they'll keep it on the ground. Tim Blackwell inside the 30 to the 29. For running back Tim Blackwell, you can't dance behind the line of scrimmage. As an ex-offensive lineman, looking at the field, you would hate that. Even if the hole's not there, you would like the back to press the hole. At least you would get a push. But if he dances in the back row, that gives the defense an opportunity to catch up to him and penetrate. This is not a dancing offense, is it? No, you've got to just slam the ball in there. You don't have big, tough offensive linemen. You're only averaging 1.9 yards per rush. When you get the ball, just slam it in there and get all you can. A second and nine. Kelly. Quick throw, Bobby Gardner, the tight end. And he's hit and dropped. Anthony Floyd, Jeremy Freitag. Five-yard pickup. A little extracurricular activity at the end of the play, but you, know, you talk about a Bobby Gardner tight end. He may be the second smartest guy on his team. He's an ex-quarterback, so he knows the coverages. He can read defenses. He knows where to go, where to sit down in defense to catch the ball. So you've got a guy in Jeff Kelly that's smart, but you, know, you look at Garner, and you know what he was able to accomplish. He knew that he wasn't going to be the quarterback, so he moves to tight end. He becomes a heck of a tight end. He's done a great job this year. That was his 14th catch on the season. Third and four. Kelly's throw, incomplete. Anthony Floyd on the coverage. Leroy Handy, the intended receiver. And Anthony Floyd, they call him pick, the pick half of the stick. But if you take a look at him, here he is right here. He's going to cover the receiver. And quarterback Jeff Kelly, if you're going to throw his pass, you really have to hum it in there because right now your receiver hasn't beat. And you threw it too much in front of him. He runs in to Anthony Floyd, the safety. But still, once he makes that break and he's in front of the defender, the ball has to be there. Grant Hanna's career long is 49. Season long is 41. This is for 42. And he missed it just barely. He just nudged it right. Jeff Bauer will have to stick with his 7-3 lead. Southern Miss on top of Louisville. For his first attempt, a 360 Tomahawk. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Amazing. And now the alley-oop reverse. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design. Oh, my. And what everyone's been waiting for, the two-handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The Dip Lover's Chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. It's here, kids! Yay! I think it's too big, Dad. Like to know exactly what you're getting before you buy it? Go to BestBuy.com and research everything before you go to the store. That way, you'll get what's right for you. Best Buy. Go ahead. Turn on the fun. I don't think so. You don't have the time. And you push your luck, blowing off everything you were taught. Better start using newly reformulated Quaker State. Protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. So your engine won't stop you. Because this is no place to find out. You've been a bad boy. Reformulated Quaker State. What more do you need to know? Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville, our aerial views, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Stars and stripes overhead, a 76-year tradition. The aerial ambassador and icon of the 100-year-old company. Our thanks to the folks at Goodyear. Some great shots tonight over Louisville, Kentucky. Dave Ragone has to get this offense going. And total yards, 14 yards after the first quarter in the second quarter. That's just unacceptable out of a quarterback of his caliber. Stalling straight ahead. 
to the 28-yard line. Number 27, Tony Starlings. Is it all on Ragone's shoulders? It has to be now with Deion Branch out of this game, and he's out for the remainder of the game. He won't be coming back. He is their go-to guy. They have Zeke Parker, the other wide receiver, as a compliment. Now Zeke Parker has to step up and be that go-to guy. He hasn't been that. Last week, if you look at Zeke Parker's numbers last week, he had seven receptions that tied the most he's had. But you know, this year, he's a solid receiver, 17 yards per catch. He needs to step up in this game. He needs to be the guy that David O can count on and get the ball to. We're going. Fires it, and that one is dropped. Antoine Harris dropped it. Alex Flanagan with more on the absence of Dion Branch. Alex? Rich, as you guys just mentioned, he is out for the game. Kind of an interesting twist down here. His x-rays are all normal. Um, nothing's wrong with his clavicle. Nothing's wrong with his neck. But he is saying that it is too sore, too painful hit for him to play. So that one of the team doctors has taken him out, said that he will not be back in. And therefore, the other guys are going to have to step up, is what the doctor said, Rich. That's what Dr. Mark May has prescribed. <laughs> for this Louisville offense. Here comes another blitz. And Ragone's throw is on the money, and this one is caught. J.R. Russell, a redshirt freshman from Tampa. And this is a nice job by the entire offense. First, the offensive line giving Dave Ragone a chance to step up in the pocket and read the defense. Step up, boom, fire the football. Good protection. Second, keep an eye on J.R. Russell, the middle receiver right here. Watch his break right here. He breaks in front of the receiver. The ball's there on a timing pattern. Good relationship between quarterback and wide receiver, knowing where that ball is supposed to be. He was covered on that play by the big hitter, Chad Williams. Harris, the motion man. We're going with time. Going to keep it. A nifty move. And Ragone is out to midfield. He will not slide. And that's Williams who said he would make him slide sooner or later. And both teams are at it at midfield right now. You knew that was going to happen after talking to both of these players yesterday. Chad Williams said Dave Ragone will test your manhood in the secondary. He won't go down, but I will hit him hard enough to make him start sliding by the second quarter. Here's Dave Ragone to the outside. He's going to take it down. What a nifty move right back across the grain. And here he breaks another tackle. Bam! Right there. Right around the first down marker. And he talks to Chad Williams. He's pumping his fist at him right in his face. He's telling him, hey, I got that first down. I got it. Chad Williams is saying, I'm coming back to get you. But look at the offensive line around Dave Ragone protecting him. They love this guy. They want to protect the quarterback. Well, he's almost like he's one of them. Absolutely. He'd be inducted into the Hogs if he played for the Redskins in the 80s line, but he's the guy that you want to rally around. He's got to pick up the first down. Now He'll that, make the tough yard. Now, that's saying something, because Theismann wasn't a Hog, was he? But he was only 180 pounds. I mean, this guy, he was bigger than some of our guys. <laughs> well, down goes Ragone. He, he checked in at 6'4", 250, and the Louisville coaches say he may have, have dropped a few pounds to 245. And he said, if he wanted to slide, I would have played baseball. How about this? We talked about he gained 25 pounds from last year to this year in the offseason and did it with nutrition and weights. And, you know, he had a short sleeve shirt on. He's like flexing his biceps in front of us saying, yeah, I gained the weight. Yeah, you know, it was a lot of hard work. But, you know, it's impressive. You know, he's going to need that. The way that he runs the football, he needs that strength. Pressure coming. Stallings out of the backfield to midfield. And he's hauled down from behind by Chris Vaughn. A nice job of spreading the ball around the offense. You don't have Deion Branch, and he's out for the remainder of the game, but getting the ball to your running back in Tony Stallings and throwing it downfield to a backup in J.R. Russell. You know, now he needs to go to Ronnie Jim. And I keep saying that because I just think that when you're 6'3", six, six, 240, and you've got 4'5 speed, and it's a mismatch between any linebacker, a mismatch between any defensive back, he's got to get the ball. Inside. Now a third down. And we're going, trying to do it all himself. And he'll pay the price. Down he goes. Rich, that's a case where Dave Ragone has to make a decision with the ball. He tried to do too much with the football. If you're going to run it, you have to let the offensive linemen know so they can go down and block. But if you pull back like that, the pursuit and the speed of the defense will catch you sooner or later. Darius McKenzie with the sack. And here's Talachka. Kenneth Johnson is deep. Steps into it at the 15. He's out to the 23-yard line. 
big game in Conference USA. Southern Miss on the road on top of Louisville. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Let's look at what makes the dome structure of great importance. You see, its circular design allows for maximum volume in a minimum space. So, an amazing number of people or things can actually fit in a relatively small area. With such an efficient design, it's a wonder domes aren't seen more often today. The yellow one is Pikachu. He's a Pokemon. Then who is Digimon? Thanks. Digimon is like a different group, wholly separate from the Pokemons. Thanks for clarifying that. Sure. Clayton, 4,000 Clayton. Actually, Digimon means digital monsters. To us, it's college football, but to the people of Texas A&M, it's a way of life. Sidelines, Thursday nights at midnight, 9 Pacific, on ESPN. Listen up, tailgaters. The stadium in Louisville is only four years old, and it is a real jewel. And Louisville Cardinal defense last year put on a great show. They had 55 sacks, second in the country. Dwayne White and Michael Josiah who was in on the last series. It looks like he'll be playing on this series. And that in itself is a story because Michael Josiah, and it's, it almost sounds harsh to say, has been in John L. Smith's doghouse. But that's kind of the, the way both Louisville players and Smith have put it. And Josiah did not play much last week. He came in late and made a difference against Colorado State. But to Smith, would like to see a little more out of Josiah in sportsmanship and be a little more consistent, not only on and off the field. And he feels he's making progress, and thus he's in the ball game. I think that's a great test of John L. Smith and Jeff Bowers, the same type of coach, because he put Leroy Handy, his starter, in the doghouse. And basically, it's for the good of the team. They will not let one player get over on the team. And the bottom line is, if we have to sit a player down or two for the good of the team and for the long run of this team, they will. And even if that is a great player, and Michael Jose is a great player, 13 sacks in nine games last year. So basically, this is a team game, and they're learning a harsh lesson, but that's a lesson that needs to be learned. Jeff Kelly connected to Chris Johnson for a 73-yard touchdown for the only touchdown of this game. And he hands it to Dwayne Woods. Woods back in the lineup after a knee injury. And he's stopped there by Chad Lee. When they get Josiah and White on the outside on the edge and move Lee around, this is a ferocious pass-rushing team. Second in the country last year in sacks. And they're a little different than Southern Miss defense. Southern Miss defense, small, quick, get all over the place. This is a defense, they power you. They just try to go right at you and run over you. Third down and six. Kelly swings it out and misses his man. Kenneth Johnson, the intended receiver. And a nice inside move by Michael Josiah. Here he is. He's going to go up the field. Boom. Take that little rip move with his left arm inside. Push the guard away. Give him a little kick to go by him. And then put pressure on quarterback Jeff Kelly. Give him an A-plus for effort. They say Josiah is one of the smartest men on this team. And that's the dichotomy there. He's so smart. Yeah, that's, that's why it's like, geez, he's so smart. Then why is he a wild man? They can't handle it. Zeke Parker. From the 18. <laughs> Parker, round and round he goes to the 21 yard line. Louisville will get the football, trailing Southern Miss, 7 3.
Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week for previews and information around the clock. That was good. Back to back. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. I'm ready. NBA League Pass out on DirecTV. It's super bad. It's hot. All that. Baby, get on up and make the call. How you gonna beat that? What a deal. Bring it on, bring it on. Up to 40 games a week. Catch up to 40 games a week from outside your local viewing area for $179 or four payments of $44.75. To order NBA League Pass on DirecTV, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS, tune to channel 216, or log on to directtvsports.com. <laughs> Michael Wilbon. I knew, I just didn't want you to know. Two guys with a lot on their minds. We've got issues. Shaq and Kobe didn't get along. Well, I don't like you, and we're going to have to do this show together. Now, they're teaming up for Pardon the Interruption. Nice name. A new show on ESPN. Sports and other stuff. We're fat, we're bald, we're old, we're white. And one of us is blind. Pardon the Interruption. 5.30 p.m. Eastern, weekdays on ESPN. Special preview Wednesday at 7.30. It's not pretty. PTI. Southern Miss a 7-3 lead, and defensive coordinator Tyrone Nix's defense has been all over the place tonight. He lines them up in every different position to attack, attack, attack. They want to get Dave or go in the quarterback's face. They come with a cornerback blitz there. Now penetration up the field, make the tackle, and they swarm to the running back and get penetration in the backfield. They've been all over the place. They try to confuse you with different fronts up front, and in the confusion, they'll bring a corner, a safety, a linebacker blitz, but they come at different angles. It's tough to defend if you're an offensive player. It's been tough on Dave Ragone. Quick throw to the outside. It's caught by Parker, who almost went down to a knee. He may have gone down to a knee. Louisville Ragone may have gotten a break there. The Southern Miss sideline, and now they are going to move it back to the 20. So that's a loss of yardage. And that's just concentration on Zeke Parker. He should know that when he goes down to catch that ball, those knees cannot touch the ground. Here it is. Here's another look at Darius. Takes a step up front. Here's the pass. Boom. Knees on the ground. There's the ball. Good call by the official. Second and 12. We're going over the middle. And finally, Ronnie Jett touches the ball. The tight end breaks one tackle across the 35 to the 37. What have I been saying in pregame? Use the tight end. And he's injured on this play. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, he's down injured. He's a player that they have to have. But that was a big play by Ronnie Gent. Gent, the junior out of Lakeland, Florida. 21 catches, three touchdowns coming in. But what a concentration play by Ronnie Gent. Coming right across. Here he is. Keep an eye on him. He's going to come out, come across. There he is, wide open, right in the middle. There's no one there, no defenders there. Great pass by quarterback David Ragone to see it. Good vision. Nice move by Gent. Oh. Right there, he gets hit right on the thigh, just above the knee. Take a look at it, just above the knee, right on the thigh with the helmet, right there. Gets him right on the knee. Leroy Johnson with a helmet right to the knee. Roddy Gent, he's one of the top tight ends in the country. Watching the tape, it kind of reminded me of Tony Gonzalez from Kansas City. Not real big. 240 pounds, but great speed and can use his body and has the hands of a wide receiver and the speed of a wide receiver, and he knows how to use his body against smaller defenders. And in this offense, the spread offense that John L. Smith and offensive coordinator Scott Linehan run, that tight end is a big part of the offense. Thursday night NFL action coming up. Buffalo and Jacksonville. Mark Brunel and Jaguars. NFL tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on Thursday for the Bills and the Giants. Ronald Gates, and Gates is hit at the 35 and sworn. And the Southern Miss defense continues to impress. Chris Langston, the first to get there. And Joe Henley finished him off. Rich, they try to run the counter tray, and I know a little bit about this counter tray play. What kills any run, particularly the counter tray, is penetration. And if you spring it out and don't turn the ball up down the field to play, you're going to get tackled for a loss or no gain. What happened was the Southern Miss defense got penetration. They were able to string the play out and not allow the back to turn the, turn the ball up the field. With 
going on second and long. And he's in trouble and he'll go down. Rod Davis, third sack of Ragone. Rich, that's a coverage sack. And Tyrone Mix knows that. What they did is they took the receivers out of the equation. Dave Ragone had plenty of time to look down the field to play, to try to find his receivers. No one was open. Here it is. You're going to watch it come in late. It's a blitz. It's a linebacker blitz. And what happens, he doesn't take one. He takes on two players, but just keeps hustling in and gets on at the end. And right in the middle, you can see the sack is in the middle by Rod Davis, but it's great penetration on the outside by Roy McGee and the rest of the defense, but that is a coverage sack. The defenders down the field of play did not let the receivers in. Third down and a mile. Radon throws it about that far. Zeke Parker makes the catch right at the sticks, and he's got the first down. That's a 28-yard completion. And the strength of Dave Ragone's arm to fire this ball. Zeke Parker on the outside is going to run down and press and make his move inside out and turn around, and there's the ball right there where he can catch it and the defender can't. But the throw, the arm strength, the big lefty right there, plant and zing the ball. Not a pretty pass, but a very effective pass with a lot of power. Ronald Gates to the 46-yard line, or rather Stallings. It's a gain of about four. Tony Stallings, he's got some guns on him there. Got some biceps on Tony Stallings. Averaging 4.4 yards a rush. He needs to get the ball more. What happens, you've got to get in the rhythm in offense. And when we talked to John L. Smith, it's probably going to be running back by committee. They want to find the hot one between Tony Stallings, Lionel Gates, and T.J. Patterson. Henry Miller even got a carry early. Second down. Nice shot there to Zeke Parker, and Parker is caught and collared. No flags. Alex Ray made the stop. You talk about a hog tie. This is coming right across the top of the shoulder pads, under the neck. Nice job of catching this ball and trying to make something happen by Zeke Parker. But right there. I mean, that's close. He's got his forearm around the face mask, but he does not grab the face mask. This is Alex Ray, the defender. And it looks like a face mask, but he had his forearm around the neck. Stallings to the 30. And the rhythm that you talked about, it seems that Louisville has got a little bit of it right now. And that's what you want to do offensively, is get into a rhythm. Running the ball, throwing the ball. Dave Ragone finally getting hot, hitting six straight passes. Eight for 14 on the night, 94 yards. Now he's getting in his rhythm. That's what he wants. He wants to get up there and run plays as fast as he can to keep everybody going. Ninth play of this drive. It's Stallings again. Finds a hole to the 27. Third down and a long three. They ran the counter again. They like running that counter from left to right. Pulling John Tay Wood to the left tackle. Aaron Dardzinski, the left guard, from left to right. They want to kick out and turn up. Here's Ronnie Gent testing his knee, seeing if he can come back. He walked off. Walked off a little slow and gingerly, but hey, he's a player that they need. For this Louisville offense, for the remainder of this game to be competitive and to win this game, they need Ronnie Jones on the football field. Here's the third down now. And they go right in the numbers to Parker, who's got the first down. And all of a sudden, Zeke Parker has stepped up in the absence of Deion Branch. Tackled by Leroy Johnson, but for Zeke Parker, I'll tell you what, I bet you the coaches on the sidelines, particularly John Elson, said, look, Deion Branch is out. You are our go-to guy. It's time for you to catch the balls and step up. And he's got a rhythm going now with quarterback Dave Ragone. Here, if he breaks that tackle, he's gone in for a touchdown. And now both of them can feel there's Deion Branch on the sideline. He's the go-to guy. Injured. He's not coming back in this game. And Zeke Parker is starting to step up now. On first and ten, Stallings has had a nice drive. And he's inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line as we approach the two-minute mark. In the second quarter, you've just joined us. Louisville scored first on a drop punt by Southern Miss. They converted it with a field goal, and then Southern Miss with a big play, a 73-yard Jeff Kelly touchdown pass. And you can see that Louisville's possessions thus far, until this one, have been a real struggle. Second six. Stalling. Caught from behind. 
Brian Evans, the sophomore from Mobile. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan, an update on Ronnie Gent. Well, Rich, as you guys just mentioned, they have been testing his knee. The trainer just told me that they do not think, they do not think that he has any torn ligaments in that knee. They're kind of just having him walk, trying to have him shake it off. Uh, they said they will not go back and take x-rays. They don't think it's torn, so they're just trying to get him, uh, get that shaken out, I guess. Rich? And Rich, it looked like it was a bruise because usually with a knee injury, your foot's planted in the ground, someone falls on it, gets caught in the turf. This is just a helmet to the knee, so it's probably a bruised knee. Third down, we're going. Little screen pass. Stallings, head down. He's to the 11. And we'll check in quickly with Brian Kenny. Brian? Rich, coming up at the half, we'll be talking about the Bowl Championship Series rankings and what you might be looking at next week. We'll talk live to Pat Hill of Fresno State, and if they'll join the party in the Bowl Championship Series Bowl outlook, and who has the edge in the Heisman race as well. That's coming up at the half, Rich. Thank you, Brian. And Louisville trying to salvage three points out of this drive. Nathan Smith, who connected from 48, this one from 28. And he sneaks it through there. So Nathan Smith has all six of Louisville's points. And the Cardinals have cut Southern Miss's lead down to one. 7 6 Southern Miss. The bow. Resistance becomes strength, becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. This notebook is bound to raise a few eyebrows. It's got a laser sharp screen, hot swappable drives you can switch on the fly, a lightning fast Intel Pentium 3 processor, and the power to turn heads. Envious? Why? For just $1,379, we can build one for you. The Compact Presario 1700T. Call 1-888-271-1020 to buy now and double your memory for free. Plus, get a free upgrade to a two-year limited warranty. From the Goodyear blimp, uh, look at Churchill Downs, which is right across the way from this stadium, Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Here in Louisville, Southern Miss has a 7-6 lead over the Cardinal with 25 seconds left in the second quarter. There is Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Mark May spent about an hour walking around this place when we got here, and your mouth was wide open the whole time. Very impressed with this stadium, and it's not a very big stadium, holds 42,000, but it's just perfect for this environment, and it's just, they've got the, the museum here, the workout facilities, the coaches' offices, the new stadium. It's a great venue. I've seen a lot of stadiums across the country. Collegiate and NFL, this is one of the top in the country. Wade Talachka. A short kick. Bobby Gardner, the tight end, will make the catch right at the 20-yard line. And so Southern Miss now with 23 seconds left. There's a look at the museum. Hey, look at Lee Corso's hair. Lots of it. He's yeah. got lots of it. But Corso coached here. He had a great TJ Tom, Tom Jackson. Jackson. And your name is actually hey. in here for Joe Jacoby's bio. Big Jake. Jake the Quake. <laughs> this place is still recovering from Lee Corso's visit I know. last Thursday. There's Johnny Unitas. You know what I like about that statue? Right there. That haircut. He's got that flat top. They come in and trim it up before every season. <laughs> Southern Miss right now content to run out the clock and Jeff Bauer says let's go let's go get warm let's talk about it Southern Miss on top of Louisville in Conference USA a one-point ball game in Louisville time for the college game day halftime report let's check in with Brian Kenny Bill Curry Mike Gold 
Rich, thank you very much. We're going to be talking to Pat Hill of Fresno State in just a moment. We'll talk Heisman race as well. Guys have their favorites. And also, BCS, when the new rankings come out, the first rankings of the season come out, oh, why is Miami so low and why is UCLA so high? We'll talk about all that when we come back at the half. The NHL is back. ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey. Wednesdays only on ESPN. Is there a problem? Problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you whacked me pretty hard there. Whack? No, I might have tapped it parking, but I didn't whack yeah, it. Yeah, you slammed into me there. Slam. Yeah, slam. Look at this. It's fine. That's misaligned. You can't replace that. Well, I'll have to get that in Europe you know, someplace. Okay, well, I'm glad. Oh, look who's here. I'm glad you're here to see this. I can't drive this home, and my wife's upstairs giving blood. I don't know if I mentioned that. The Passat Wagon. It only looks like a million bucks. Oh, oh, I'm not an internist, but I think I got some bleeding going on here. A groove I'm on a that makes you get up and move. I'm on a rip it out. Presenting I'm on a it Roots out. of Rhythm, a collection of the hottest songs ever recorded. I'm a roll, roll, All the pioneers of R&B: Bo Diddley, James Brown, and Ray Charles. Hey, mama, don't you treat me wrong. Come and love you, daddy, all right, long, all right, long. Get Roots of Rhythm on CD hey, hey. for just $17.99. Order with your credit card and get a free bonus CD featuring the greatest ballads ever recorded. Let's get it on. That's two great Roots of Rhythm CDs, 28 hits. With each CD, you'll get a fact-filled booklet that tells the stories of the artists and their songs. You ain't nothing but a hound. Then audition other Roots of Rhythm CDs, satisfaction guaranteed. So order now with your credit card and get two CDs for just $17.99. Use your credit card and call the toll-free number on your screen and get two great Roots of Rhythm CDs for just $17.99. That's 28 songs for just $17.99. Operators are standing by, so call now. Back here at the half with Southern Miss and Louisville. Gentlemen, let's talk a little bit about the BCS rankings. Uh, pushed back one week, but the first BCS rankings will be coming out on Monday. Now, sometimes these things have a way of taking care of themselves, and sometimes it won't happen that way. Here's where it will start, and it really won't change too much coming up this week because there's some potential blowout games out there. Some teams like Miami and Virginia Tech have the week off, but here's how we have it. Oklahoma, number two in both polls, will be number one, beating K-State and Texas back-to-back -back weeks. Number two will be UCLA, number four and number six in the polls, but number one in five of the seven computer rankings. Number three will be Nebraska, then Oregon, Miami, number one in both polls, but low on the computers. You know, wins over Florida State and Penn State, not what they used to be, then Virginia Tech, and then Fresno State. Again, we'll be talking about Fresno State. Top six finish and you get an automatic berth in a BCS Bowl. Bill, let's start with you there. Now, I look at it this way. You know, Oklahoma, I'm just watching it on the field. Oklahoma, back-to-back -back weeks, K-State, Texas, makes sense to me. Miami should get there eventually, but so far, again, Florida State, Penn State, it's not what it used to be. No, it isn't, and Miami's gonna have another problem, and it's in the form of one of those West Coast teams that wears baby blue, powder blue, but the UCLA Bruins have learned to play defense. It was only a year ago that they gave up the most points in the history of UCLA football. Enter Phil Snow, a new defensive coordinator brought over from Arizona State. They returned Kenyon Coleman, a dominating defensive end. Robert Thomas, the middle linebacker, has stepped it up. And we don't have time to give you all the numbers, but just uh, consider that other teams are making 16% conversion on third downs, and that is stunning. They are playing great defense on the West Coast at UCLA, and I think they are going to be the factor that hurts a Miami-type team more than any other in the BCS rankings. And, Mike, we're looking at Nebraska, and we're saying, all right, well, sure, it's Nebraska. They're, they're killing people. What's their best win? Iowa State? Notre Dame? I mean, it's not, I'm sorry about that, not overly <laughs> impressive, but I was talking about, not overly impressive so far, which is what you're really expecting. But, I mean, you, you look again at, at that graphic that we had up there, the, the full screen we had up there, and the, the seven teams there, the six before Fresno State, well, Oklahoma and Nebraska are going to tangle the 27th and probably again for the Big 12 championships. Miami and Virginia Tech 
are going to play on December 1st. And you know what? Oregon and UCLA are going to play uh, are going to play each other on November 10th. So those all teams are going to play each other. So if Fresno State continues to play well and maybe win big in some of these games, they just kind of sit tight, watch those teams in front of them knock each other off a little bit. And, you know, all of a sudden, they're up in that six, and they're guaranteed a spot. We're going to talk about that with the head coach for Fresno State, Pat Hill, and see exactly, do they have a shot? Maybe they're in their best position that they, they could be in right now, then they'll be in the rest of the way, or will other teams start dropping off? Sports Center coming your way over on ESPN. Stuart Scott and Rich Eisen taking a look at Game 1 in the National League Championship Series. The big unit versus Greg Maddox. Take a look ahead at the three-time defending world champions taking on the team with 116 wins in the regular season. That's Sports Center on ESPN at 11 Eastern time. When we come back, Pat Hill, Fresno State, and just barely on the outside looking in. We'll talk to the coach when we come back. Inside the museum. Skate where there are no limits. Introducing ESPN X Games Skateboarding for PlayStation 2. With mind blowing fantasy levels, plus authentic X Games competition with eight pro skaters and over 40 intense tricks. Skateboarding as you know it is now extinct. Ready to be for everyone. If you're concerned about hair loss, call Hair Club now and get this booklet or CD ROM free. It's packed with the latest information on hair loss breakthroughs from around the world, including hair cloning and genetic therapy. It's loaded with the latest updates on all the proven hair loss options available today, including approved drugs, shampoos, and Hair Club's new procedures. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now to get more information. Hair Club, over 25 years of hair loss experience available at your fingertips. Brian Kenny, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick back here with you. We're at the half at Southern Miss and Louisville. Let's talk Fresno State now. We just showed you Fresno State, a number seven right now in our unofficial BCS standings, and their head coach is Pat Hill of Fresno State. Coach, congratulations to you. And let me go through the resume for people out there that are, are just joining us at Colorado against Oregon State, at Wisconsin, at Colorado State. Barely, but you did get the win there, uh, finally, in overtime. Where do you think you deserve to be right now, given your resume, given the teams you have beaten right now, without thinking, hey, that's Nebraska, hey, that's Oklahoma, where do you think your team should be ranked? I don't think there's any question we should be in the top ten and... Uh... You know, where a lot of teams are just starting to play some road games and some tough opponents, you know, we've had four road games in our first six games, and at the end of 11 games, we will have had seven road games. So th this team's had to do it on the road. They've had to do it against Big 12, Big 10, Pac-10, uh, Mountain West Conference uh, preseason favorites. So I think this team has proven itself so far, but we got seven games to go. We're not even at the half point of our season. Pat, this is Bill. Um most of the time when you're a team in this situation and you're sort of coming out of nowhere and you've been able to compete with the big boys and whip them in their own place, almost always those teams have a disastrous slip up and lose to somebody they shouldn't. Are you thinking about that? Was this last week a, a wake up call uh, for your guys so that maybe that won't be a problem for you? Well, no, I think Colorado State's a very good football team. You know, they've won, they've been in bowls five out of the last seven years and that was the game that they really circled on the calendar to change their season. So I thought we went into a hostile environment, a full house against a team that was, uh, that was a make it or break it game for them. And, and, and our football team came back and won that game, showed a lot of heart and a lot of character. I thought that was a great win for us. Coach Mike Golick here. And, you know, you're dealing with 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids who love to read about themselves in the paper a little bit. And they're probably watching you right now, watching the rankings that came up and seeing where they may start in this BCS poll. Kids are going to read about that. How do you handle that, knowing these kids are going to talk about it? Even if you tell them not to, they're going to talk about it and discuss it amongst themselves, just how highly ranked they are right now. Well, we've already talked about it, Mike. I, I, I've, I've told them many, many times, we just keep winning, just take care of Fresno State, and, and things will work out for us. But we've got to win 13 games. 
Uh, we've won six. We've been we've been one and zero six times. And this week we play Boise State. We've got to win again. And if we can win out, they know that there's a prize for them. And uh, th they know what's at stake every time they play. Pat, I hate to be bringing up computers here. We're talking football, but four of the eight computers still will utilize margin of victory. Uh, the guys who vote in the polls certainly will as well. You're in the fourth quarter. You're up three touchdowns. Maybe before you take your foot off the accelerator, do you do anything differently now if you're looking at, hey, maybe we go from number seven to number five if we pour it on a little bit? Well, we, we had an opportunity at Tulsa. We were ahead 31-3 to at the end of the third quarter. And I like to play everybody, and we're going to continue to play everybody. I... I don't, I don't really think that's what college football should be about. I, I really think what should really happen is we shouldn't have this all based on computer rankings or anything else. I, I think football should be decided in a playoff like every other sport is. And if you're not good enough, go home. If you are, play, and you've got to play and win. And the, and the team that ends up winning them all wins the championship. Pat, Bill again. The thing that impressed me most, as well as your guys played, and heaven knows this is, the, this is the Cinderella story of the year, I'm still most impressed with your academic support system. Are you still having those 7 a.m. study halls with the assistant coaches? We do it three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll wow. be in there again at 7 in the morning. And, you know, we, I hear a lot of people on ESPN and other uh, channels talking about us taking non-qualifiers. Yeah, we take four or five non-qualifiers a year. We don't have 24. We have 14 on our team. And I'll tell you what, we're doing a great job with those young men. They're getting a great education. They're going to get their degrees. They're going to move on and be very successful. We're very proud of the fact that we take non-qualifiers. And um, I'll defend them forever because I think those young men have just as much an opportunity as anybody else. And they're having success here, and they're doing it right. Coach, let's talk about the, one of those quality young men, and that's David Carr, your, your Heisman hopeful at quarterback and the leader of this team, averaging about 300 yards a game, passing 14 touchdowns, more importantly, only two interceptions. Talk about his abilities and, and mostly his leadership. Well, he's a great leader. You know, he, uh, he carries this football team on his shoulders, but he leads by example. He, he's one of those guys that the players love to be around. He, he's a gym rat. He likes to work in the weight room. He's a very mature young man, and he understands the game of football. He makes very, very good decisions with the football. He's going to be very successful in the future. And, and he's our leader. He, he's the man that gets it done for us. But he's got a very good supporting cast around him. Pat Hill, the head coach of Fresno State. Yeah, great story, as Bill mentioned. Uh, great watching you guys burst onto the scene this year. We'll be watching you through the whack as well. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you very much. Head coach of Fresno State. When we come back, we'll be talking about that quarterback we were mentioning just a moment ago, David Carr. In the Heisman watch, who's left, who's just on the brink? We'll talk about that when we come back. Every day, we'll shine a light in this world For everyone, man, woman, boy and girl If we all join together with belief in our hearts we can light up the world with pride. We'll be forever. We'll be as one. Shining for all of mankind. When we shine. institutions 19 men's and women's sports 5,000 student athletes one outstanding conference conference USA it numbers among the best daring to teach Daring to heal. Daring to create. Daring to discover. Daring to serve. Daring to lead. The University of Louisville. Dare to be great. 
We're at the half. Southern Miss and Louisville, 7 6 at the half. Brian Kennedy, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick. And we're ready to talk Heisman a couple of weeks into the season, and things are starting to It'll come clear to us now. David Carr, we mentioned Fresno State, 300 passing yards per game. Eric Crouch of Nebraska, who struggled throwing the ball, but can still run the ball and is leading the Corn Huskers week after week. Can't ignore that. Woody Dantzler, uh, last week, 23 for 27, throwing the football. I mean, sensational. We'll talk more about I'm going to talk more about him. Ken Dorsey of Miami. Also, Deshaun Foster, over 300 yards last week. Rex Grossman of Florida, still number one in passing, even with that loss against Auburn. Joey Harrington of Oregon over 200 yards passing yards passing per game as well I don't you know watching Woody dance like, yeah. I don't know I don't know who else can well it's right now but I, who else can compete with this guy right, let's, let's get away from the quarterbacks for a while okay they're pretty boys that are throwing the ball around I know <laughs> he's Woody running run, for 180 Woody, yards Woody a game. Runs a, he's, yeah. a, he's a little <laughs> Come different on. but I'm gonna go with Deshaun Foster right now 301 yards against Washington average in a buck 62 a game tops in the nation eight touchdowns can take it inside can bounce it outside right now he is my guy. The quarterbacks certainly are going to put up the big-time throwing numbers, Bill, but boy, that Woody Danzler, is he exciting or what? Repeat after me. Yeah. Woody Danzler is not just a quarterback. <laughs> Woody Danzler is a superb running back and a superb quarterback. All he does is put up 342 yards a game, but he does something much more important for his team. If I were having to pick somebody from the college ranks this year to go into the foxhole with me to lead a unit into combat, I would pick Woody Dantzler. He's the leader. His priorities are in order. When you sit and talk with him, you just can't help be with, but be impressed with the kind of human being he is. And I think he's going to be awfully hard to beat in this race. Yeah, Dantzler, Eric Crouch as well. You see, you're going back old school, the prototype. You're back. You're posing. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. Things have changed a little bit. Absolutely. The they <laughs> move a little more <laughs> yeah, than that now. Guys, thank you very much. We're at the half. We're getting ready for the second half of Southern Miss and Louisville key conference game in Conference USA. When we come back, Rich Waltz and Mark May will have the call. Enjoy the second half, everybody. Hey, Mr. Palmer, how can I help you? Hi, Bill. Time to rotate those tires. Cooper Tires. Drive on. Moo. It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300X featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades. We'll double your memory and give you a printer free. And everything's just $9.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th, so stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. The University of Southern Mississippi is a student-centered university with a highly charged learning environment. Our mission is quality academic programs, groundbreaking research, and service to society. Students learn to map the bottom of oceans, work with scientists to improve the quality of life, engage in the arts, and become Mellon, Goldwater, and Truman scholars. Our list of accomplishments grows larger every year for one reason. We have the brightest minds teaching the brightest students. The University of Southern Mississippi. And pardon the interruption, literally and figuratively, you can see Mr. Tony in his own <laughs> TV show, Tony Kornheiser, Mike Wilbon. If you heard him on uh, Tony Kornheiser's show on ESPN Radio, a hilarious program, a special edition of the TV show, pardon the interruption, Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern Time. You can see it on ESPN, a one-hour preview special. Gang, we're at the half. When we come back, second half action, Southern Miss leading Louisville 7-6. to six. Check it out. NBA League Pass on Direct TV. Ow! It's super bad. All the action. Baby, get on up. Pick up the phone. Dial for love. What a deal. Bring it on, bring it on. Up to 40 games a week. Catch up to 40 games a week from outside your local viewing area for $179 or four payments of $44.75. To order NBA League Pass on Direct TV, call 1 800 GET SPORTS, tune to channel 216, or log on to directtvsports.com. The remote control brought a new level of convenience into every household. With this powerful tool, it is just a matter of a few easy steps to order any pay-per-view event or movie. 
First, make sure your receiver is continuously connected to a LAN-based phone line. Then go to the 100s, pick the program of your choice, select the Buy button, and confirm your purchase. The whole thing takes just a few moments, and you're all set. Say hi to the future. Fifteen institutions. Nineteen men's and women's sports. Look out! Five thousand student athletes. Oh, One outstanding conference. Conference USA. It numbers among the best. Back in Louisville, Kentucky in Conference USA on a Tuesday night, Southern Miss has a 7-6 lead over the Louisville Cardinal. Our ESPN2 game track, big injuries for Louisville. They lost Dion Branch, and Ronnie Gent apparently is out with a badly bruised left knee. The big play in this one was Southern Miss's true freshman, Chris Johnson, going 73 yards with a Jeff Kelly pass. And it's almost redundant. How about this Southern Miss defense? Very swarm. They're all over the place. The key to this game in the second half is going to be the Louisville offensive line. Coming into the game, they've only given up 10 sacks in six games. Tonight, they've already given up five. Dave Ragone at times looks like he's trying to do too much. When you lose Gent and you lose Branch, it's, it's almost hard to blame him. It, you can't blame him because two out of his top three receivers are out. So he's going to have to go to redshirt freshmen, true freshmen and sophomores, and they're going to have to step up in this offense. Stepping up is Zeke Parker. And on the return, he's out close to the 30-yard line. Numbers from the first half, shocking on the Louisville side. Negative three yards rushing. That's what really sticks out. The penalties, five penalties to zero. And I already told you about five sacks in the first half by the Southern Mississippi defense. Those are what really sticks out in the second half. Better protection by the offensive line of Louisville. Both teams have to start establishing the run. Only 16 rush yards for Southern Mississippi. And the negative three, as I already talked about, to the Louisville Cardinals. Going on first and ten. Parker. And Zeke Parker to the 36-yard line. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Well, Ronnie Jen's going to be out for the rest of the game. Um, you guys, he, we thought he had a bruise to his right knee. They just checked it out, and they found out that he has a very small tear in his medial collateral ligament, um, something that they won't do surgery on that but will keep him out of this game and possibly next game, but they're not sure. They'll do a little more looking into it, but a small tear on the MCL for Ronnie Jen. Stallings across the 42. And he's got a first down for the Cardinal, who had a 67-yard drive to finish the first half. It resulted in a field goal. And they did a nice job of mixing it up between pass and run, run and pass. And Chad Williams, the phenomenal rover back, is getting up a little slow, trying to shake it off on the play after making the tackle to hit on that play. But he's a tough guy. I expect he'll stay in the game. We were looking forward to the Chad williams Dion Branch matchup because the last couple of years they've developed a relationship adversarial on the field and a little bit of a friendship off the field. I would say that was a first round TKO. <laughs> Here's Ragone. Breaks a tackle across midfield and Ragone still has yet to slide. It's a 13 yard pickup. This is the intangible that a quarterback like Dave Ragone gives your offense. He's a leader. He's out there screaming at his players right now. Do what you're supposed to do. Be where you're supposed to be on that play. He couldn't get where he wanted to, so he had to pull it down and run the football. But he's fired up. He's getting his players fired up. He's been sacked three times, and that is included in those rushing totals. Stallings. Stalling starting to get a little bit of daylight, although it closed quickly there. Etrick Pruitt, the sophomore. Now, Richard, I'm surprised when we had a conversation, we spoke with John L. Smith, he said that Lionel Gates will be the guy down the road. He has tremendous vision, just a freshman. We should see a lot of him in this game, and he's their game breaker. I'm surprised he hasn't been in the game. We've seen Tony Stallings most of the night. John L. Smith. In his fourth season, he's taken Louisville to bowl games in all three of his years here. 
John Tay Woodard was just a little bit early on that, I'd say, about four steps. The fourth false start by Louisville. Keep an eye on the left tackle right here. He's just a tad early. Okay. Where are the other guys? You know, Come on, guys, catch up to me. Ragone looked like he moved early as well. If you're gonna if you're gonna tag Woodard with that, I think Ragone may deserve a, a demerit as well. Well, you see, as the next offensive lineman, you step up and take the blame and stand up there like you're a man used and to take it. it. Yeah, you're, you're used, used to it. it. Everybody points the finger at you. It's never the quarterback. But you said Ragone is an offensive lineman he at is. heart. So you betcha. And, and these players really love to play hard for him. Faced with a second and thirteen now. Ragone scrambling as he's done all night. And he comes up short for Antoine Harris at the 20 yard line. On the coverage, Greg Brooks. It looked like Dave Ragone short on that pass just a little bit. They came with the blitz up the middle. It was a nice pickup initially by the offensive line. Here's the blitz. It's a nice pickup initially, but then there's penetration and the protection breaks down. What happens as an offensive lineman, you have to get your head in front. The center didn't on that play. Flush, Dave Ragone out of the pocket. He didn't look like he was set to throw that ball, kind of hopped and threw that ball. His feet weren't set. That's why it was short. Three of ten on third downs. Faced with a long run here. Movement, flags. They play on. And we're going to throw his behind Zeke Parker. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Alex? Well, Mark and Rich, one of the problems Dave Ragon may be having with getting his feet set is that he's having some trouble with his right ankle, so you may want to keep an eye on that. He apparently told the trainer during the half that his ankle is numb, that he's kind of hobbling a little bit around it. It's giving him a lot of problems. It was fallen on during one of those sacks that he took. Rich? And for a guy that is 6'4 and 250, he is surprisingly mobile. Very mobile, very quick feet. You think about it, he's durable. He's tough. With an injury like that, some quarterbacks would go to the sideline. He's not even thinking about that. J.R. Russell in motion. Quick throw by Ragone, and Parker tripped on his route and then dropped the ball. That's four drops that Ragone has suffered. And he's not getting any help, and Zeke Parker gets up just a little bit slow, grabbing his hands, string, he turns around. There it is. It looks like he just got his feet caught in the turf. Take another look. Look at his feet. It looks like they get caught in the grass, believe it or not. He goes up trying to make the play. It's a good effort, but he can't come down with the reception. Talachka's sixth kick of the day. Chad Williams, his first return. Out to the 13-yard line. Southern Miss gets their first possession of the second half when we get back to Louisville. 7-6 Golden Eagles. The producers of House on Haunted Hill invite you to a special house. This place is awesome! With glass walls that move. It's all sealed up. And the dead just down the hall. We got company! We should get the hell out of here! Now! Hell, hell. The gang's all here. Thirteen ghosts. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 26th. Your new CD has at least one song you absolutely love. Several. You could take or leave. And a couple you absolutely hate. It's a good thing Philips makes CD recorders. With its three-disc changer and high-speed recording, you can make your own custom CDs quickly and easily. And compared with PC burners and other CD recorders, Philips BitSync technology assures incredibly accurate copies. Philips CD recorders for perfect copies. Call now for Philips Special 50-50 Offer. $50 off the price of a Philips CD recorder, plus $50 in free blank audio CDs. $100 value, available now for a limited time. Call for your free rebate coupons in the Philips retailer nearest you. Don't let the ball hit in the head and get a concussion. I'll just shut up so I can shoot. Pressure. See, wait, wait, wait. All right, go ahead. You got it or not?
Watson. See, Ricky, I can't believe I lost to Stu. So they miss a one-point lead over Louisville. Big news around Louisville yesterday and today. George Shin, the owner of the Charlotte Hornets in town, exploring the possibility of an NBA franchise in this city, although they already have an NBA-type coach for their basketball program. Rick Pitino has breathed an awful lot of excitement into this city. Not only Rick Pitino, the football team, they're having a phenomenal year, 5-1. Here's Jeff Kelly to the sidelines, and it's incomplete. Speaking of Rick Pitino, Midnight Madness. And 3,000 fans Friday night in the Kentucky Convention Center. Little slam dunking, little three-point shooting. In fact, Rich used to do that. I he? did. Backyard, about a five-foot hoop. <laughs> All the neighborhood kids come by. They open their season on November 18th against South Alabama right here on ESPN 2 at 7 o'clock. Adjust your daytimers accordingly. And here's Southern Miss with Dwayne Woods across the 20. Out to the 22-yard line. We focus so much on Louisville's offense against Southern Miss's defense. How about Southern Miss's offense? That was one of the better runs by Dwayne Wood for the offense of Southern Miss. And, you know, he got a good seal by the offensive line on the left side, able to get to the contain on the outside. For Southern Miss, we had a conversation with Jeff Kelly, and we asked him, what are you going to do? Well, we want to move the chains, we want to run the ball, but we will take our shots. In the first half, they did take the shots with that 73-yard screen pass for the touchdown, but I expect to see Jeff Kelly to put this ball up in the air. He will on third and two. Got a man wide open, and it's caught by Terrell Broden, the sophomore tight end. The longest run today from scrimmage is eight yards for Southern Miss. And again, they missed that guy, Derek Nix. Thousand yards, thousand yards, and he gets injured. You know, he's the type of back that he was powerful, could take it between the tackles, had enough speed to pick up the, the big, big yardage. And, you know, the nine touchdowns, the eight touchdowns, that's what you really look for. Not just the yards, but he's able to pound it in for the touchdowns. His brother, the defensive coordinator, is doing quite a job tonight. Little option, first we've seen, maybe the last we'll see of it, Dwayne White made the stop. Dwayne White wasn't fooled at all. There's a flag at the end of the play, but for a big defensive end like that, 6'2", 280, to get up the field, and wrestle down the running back in the open field, that's outstanding athleticism. And that was why I was able to get him down. Unofficially, the seventh penalty against Louisville. I don't think Southern Miss has had a flag all night. One. And I think at the end of this game, this is one of the things. Still face mask on the defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That John L. Smith will look at when he goes over the tapes and just say, hey, you know, guys, we have to play smarter. You know, this hurts us. And we'll take another look at it. Keep an eye on Dwayne White, his hands. Looks like he's got him by the back of the shoulder pads with his left hand. Look at his right hand. It's on the shoulder pads. It's not on the face mask. You're, it did look like it, but you're right. A break for Southern Miss. They go up top. Chris Johnson, who had the long touchdown catch and run. Anthony Floyd pick of stick and pick fame on the coverage. And Anthony Floyd does a nice job as a safety covering a wide receiver. Look at the pressure. Here, come the, here comes the blitz up the middle. Ooh, nice hit on the end. Nice that, blitz in the middle by Freetag, the middle linebacker. You know what? They, we talk about the difference between the NFL and college football. That's probably a fine Absolutely. in the helmet NFL. Helmet going after the quarterback. But, i tell you what, Dwayne White's a little frustrated. He's used to getting after the quarterback and getting there. He just hadn't had that many opportunities tonight. Second and seven. Kelly to the sideline. Too strong for Leroy Handy. Third down and seven. And this is the major problem with Jeff Bowers' offense and Jeff Kelly. Just not consistency throwing the football. Obviously, no consistency at all running the ball, 1.9 yards for rush, but throwing the ball when they have to have it, they have to come up with big plays. And now I think they should go back to that screen play. That was the play that really put them on the board. It's the only score of the day. On 
Third and seven. Lots of time. Got his man. Kelly to Rocky Harrison. To the 42. 25 yards. Curry Burns on the coverage. Just a little deep curl pattern by Rocky Harrison, but it all starts up front with the pass protection. Jeff Cal Kelly, watch the offensive line right here. They run a TT stunt on the right. A T stunt on the right, but he's got time to look down the field to his receiver, and his receiver virtually goes up in the air to slow down to catch this football. There's a hand up in the air, but Jeff Kelly has enough separation between line and quarterback to look downfield. They keep it on the ground with Woods. Flags are down after the run. Number 48, Bobby Lemieux in on the tackle for the guards. The last face mask, as we saw, was not earned. And then we'll see if we've got video proof of this one. Another five yards. Southern Miss now seems to have the momentum. They're doing a little run, doing a little pass, but Look at the penalty situation. Eight penalties to one. How many first and twos do you find? Not many. From the 34. Dwayne Woods doesn't convert it. Yeah, Dwayne White made the stop. Stop at number 99. You know, Rich, they may have gotten their average on that carry, 1.9. First and two, and it's short of the first down. It's hard to believe that, that Southern Miss, a team that has been so consistent on the ground under Jeff Bauer, just has so much trouble. They are last in Conference USA in rushing at 75 yards per game. But they're still three and one. And when we spoke with Jeff Bauer, he told us we are a much better team than we've shown. We just have to put it together offensively. On second and point one yards, if you were correct, they pick it up. Dwayne Woods with the carry to the 30-yard line. And it doesn't look like much what they're doing is they're just slamming the ball in there. But what they're doing is moving the chains, running down the clock, keeping the Louisville offense on the sidelines. 29 yards tonight. Their season to average, 74.8. That usually doesn't get it done, but they've got such a great defense. And the reason why, right there. They need Mr. Nix back healthy next season. They hope to get him back. And he's excited about coming back. Southern Miss had three first downs in the first half. That was their third first down of this drive here in the second half. Kelly's in trouble. He throws it away. Kenneth Johnson, the cousin of Chris Johnson, out on that pattern. And that was a smart play. That's where a guy that can graduate within three years and get his MBA in his fourth year does for you. Throws the ball away when he's pressured out of the pocket. He gets out of the pocket, just throw it away. Let's not hurt ourselves. We're getting close to that field goal attempt position, but we've got another shot at it. Let's just calm down and take another play. 60 times Jeff Kelly was sacked last year. Well, look at the improvement. <laughs> that half a sack a game improvement. Always look for the positive. Thank you. Here comes a blitz. Kelly, gorgeous throw, caught by Handy at the five. He's down to the two. 29 yards. Anthony Floyd finally stopped him. What a beautiful route by Leroy Handy. And not only Leroy Handy, what a touch throw by quarterback Jeff Kelly. Getting the protection. The offensive line picks up the blitz, allows the quarterback. He's only looking one way. He's looking to Leroy Handy. But look how he lost his ball over one defender in front of another defender, allowing his receiver, Leroy Handy, to catch the ball and then do something after the catch. Pick up the extra yardage. But nice protection by the guys up front. Timeout, Southern Miss. Jeff Kelly wants to talk about it. Jeff Bauer on the doorstep. Southern Miss, a one-point lead. Back after this. There are little men with great big hearts in racing. They're the jockeys on the backs of thoroughbreds. Rick Dick riding like no other on a filly cold butter. More exciting than the books you might have read. So hidey, hidey, hey, hidey, hidey, ho. When you see him, give him a shout. Go, baby, go. Preview the World Thoroughbred Championships Friday on ESPN2.
The first oil filter ever made back in 1923 wasn't called an oil filter. It was called a Purolator. Today, every car on the road relies on technology pioneered by Purolator. And the same company that invented the oil filter just keeps reinventing it. So that for anyone who cares enough to change their own oil, Pure Later continues to mean pure oil then, pure oil now, pure oil later. To us, it's college football, but to the people of Texas A&M, it's a way of life. Sidelines, Thursday nights at midnight, 9 Pacific, on ESPN. Southern Miss on the one-yard line, headed in, a 7-6 lead over Louisville. On Friday night, a chance to see the number 10 Fresno State Bulldogs take on Boise State, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on ESPN. If you watched halftime, Pat Hill, the coach of the Bulldogs, was on, and Brad Edwards, who's our VCS guru at ESPN, ran some numbers simulating the VCS. He's got Fresno State 7 in the VCS standings, if there were VCS standings at this point in time. They need to finish in and sixth to get themselves in the BCS game. I like their chances. Right now they're on the outside looking in, but Brad Edwards from ESPN is never left. We've learned that, haven't we? Movement and flags. Now let's see. Almost all the laundry has been against Louisville tonight. Good ball. Ball start. The offense. Five yard penalty. So first down. This is an area. When you're in this territory, and you're in a way, right there, there's the jump. Orlando Dantzler, you have to concentrate, concentrate. You're in the other team's territory. They're going to scream, they're going to yell. You have to concentrate. You've got the ball first and goal on the two. You punch it in. You take a commanding lead. Now it's a situation where you're backed up. It's up to everybody in this offense to pay attention. Crowd trying to make a difference. Kelly. He'll keep it, and he's caught. Number 17, Kelly, sacked. Dwayne White in the pursuit, and there's a flag down in the end zone. Personal foul, Louisville. First and goal from the six should become first and goal from the three. John L. Smith is not happy about that. You can't be. It's so frustrating for a coach. You get a penalty moving on their offense. You back them up from first and goal on the two. Get them in a situation where you bring the quarterback down and you get a ridiculous personal foul penalty that gives the offense life again. First and goal from the three. Woods caught and dropped. Bobby LeFew. In, in short yardage and goal line situation, it's who wants it more, who gets the jump on the ball, and who has the better leverage. Keep an eye right here. Just the penetration by everybody. LeFew and company, they get lower, they get through the gaps, their shoulder pads are lower, and penetration in the backfield, that kills any run. Running back, Dwayne Woods has no chance on this play. LeFew is a redshirt freshman. Both of these defenses are very young. Only one senior on this Louisville defense. Only two seniors on that talented Southern Miss defense. A lot to look forward. That's amazing. Second and goal. Kelly, a little reverse. Garners an ex-quarterback. Kelly 
is open for the touchdown. That will bring some smiles on the Southern Miss sideline. And what a gutsy call by offensive coordinator Chris Klanakis. Klanakis. To call that play in that situation, well-designed play. When we spoke with him earlier this week, I asked him point blank, do you have any special plays in any trick plays? He said, we just got out of a meeting, Mark. We've got three of them. We haven't decided on which one we're going to use. I guess that's the one that they're using, and they used it. the extra point and Southern Miss on a 15 play drive. This and a play like this, this really breaks the back and the momentum of the defense. Here it is. It's going to be handed off here by the quarterback. Sneaks out Jeff Kelly. He goes to the corner of the end zone. Bobby Garner, the ex-quarterback, he's wide open. They practice this in practice. This is one of those plays where they're happy to do it. There he goes in motion. The tight end, ex-quarterback, Bobby Garner, just lines up. It's an ugly throw. But it doesn't matter. It's a touchdown. Garner did not tip his hand. He didn't take his gloves off. And that was smart. And a, and a lot of players in that situation will take their gloves off. And smart defensive players will look alert, alert, trick play. He didn't in that situation. Southern Mississippi, that's a great call offensively. I like it in that situation. Big call. Conference records last five years. Florida State, Nebraska, Virginia Tech. And look at Southern Miss in Conference USA. 26 and 6. We spoke with Jeff Bauer. He told us the reason why we've had the success is because of our coaches and the way that they recruit. They recruit great kids. Now, we've talked about these two schools and how they're the traditionally the cream of the crop in Conference USA. And certainly three of the last four winners of this game have gone on to the Liberty Bowl with a Conference USA championship. And they try to kick it away from Parker, and they kick it out of bounds. But please excuse, and I'll move this out to the 35-yard line, please excuse Steve Logan at East Carolina and Rick Minner of Cincinnati if they say, wait a minute here. You look at the standings, Cincinnati's 3-0, East Carolina's 2-0 in the conference. And this has always been traditionally a very competitive race, even though Southern Miss has had the success. East Carolina and Louisville have battled near the top of these standings. Memphis has played very well this year, 2-1. Tommy West taking over in his first year. John L. Smith won the conference championship last year with this guy, Dave Ragone. Seven. I think this Louisville offense needs a spark. They really haven't had a spark in quite a while. They need that big play to get everyone going. Rob Ebel, the tackle for Louisville, slow to get up. If you've just joined us, Louisville has lost Dion Branch with a shoulder injury and Ronnie Gent, their talented tight end with a knee injury. And Dave Ragone is running out of weapons. Ragone hit as he throws. And incomplete. Antoine Harris, the intended receiver. Greg Brooks on the coverage. Every Wednesday on ESPN, National Hockey Night. Dallas and St. Louis. The Blues, of course, swept the Stars out of the playoffs. So over the summer, they signed Pierre Turgeon. And tomorrow night, they return for another round. The Stars and the Blues. Wednesday night hockey presented by Nextel. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Comes a blitz. Ragone's in trouble. Down he goes. 
That is six sacks. Rod Davis and Roy McGee. And Tyrone Nix's defense is very impressive tonight. And that's what's putting the pressure on both of those linebackers hitting the gaps. Didn't have enough blockers up front to hold up for quarterback Dave Rodone. He didn't have a chance. As soon as he got back in set, he was moving his feet to try to get out of the way. That's the sixth sack by the Southern Miss defense. Here they come. Both linebackers just finding the hole, coming to the outside, getting to the quarterback. Kenneth Johnson is deep. Wade Talashka. And they got a piece of it. It's partially blocked and rolls across the 40 out to the 44 yard line. Edric Pruitt, who had two blocks last week, gets another one this week. Southern Miss will take over. He's become a very special player on the special teams for Southern Mississippi. But that's just a player that's conscious. You have to look and find out where he is on the field. John L. Smith is looking right now. 14 6 Southern Miss. There are many good reasons to get a home security system from ADT. We're home. This is where we live. Some smaller than others. So it's no surprise that more Americans choose ADT to help protect their homes than any other company. We're always there with the most sophisticated technology and skilled professionals, helping to keep you safe from burglary, fire, flood, even carbon monoxide. ADT blankets your home with an invisible wall of protection. And now you can get ADT installed from just $99. Call 800-ADT-ASAP or an ADT authorized dealer. You could also save up to 20% off your basic homeowner's insurance. At ADT, we give you more than a security system. We give you a feeling of security, no matter what. Daddy's got you. Call now and get ADT installed from just $99, plus up to 20% off your basic homeowner's insurance. ADT. Always there. Kornheiser, Michael Wilbon. We're fat, we're bald, we're old, we're white. And one of us is blind. Pardon the interruption. 5.30 p.m. Eastern, weekdays on ESPN. Special preview Wednesday at 7.30. It's not pretty. Get ready for NFL football on Thursday night. The Jaguars mark them out. And come back in Jimmy Smith. Send off Rob Johnson and his herd of hungry buffalo. Bills, Jaguars, 8.30 Thursday on ESPN. 14-6, Southern Miss. On top of Louisville, six minutes left, third quarter. And here's a look at Etrick Pruitt. Right there, he splits Anthony Floyd and Jeremy Freitag. And Jeremy Freitag just pushes him back into the punter, and there's the block. That's his third in two games. So the miss back on offense. Kelly's throw is dropped by Leroy Handy. There's a look at Pruitt. So, you know, some guys just have a knack for blocking punts. It's something that you work on every practice. You go through punt protection, you go through punt coverage, you go through punt block, and there's always that one guy that has a knack just for blocking punts. And for Southern Mississippi, that's Etrick Pruitt. And there are schools, obviously, that, that specialize in that. As Dwayne Woods carries it to the 41-yard line. Virginia Tech, of course, is Frank Beamer. Pat Hills, Fresno State Bulldogs. I've been able to get a lot of punts in the last four years. And to me, that shows they're a well-coached team. Any team that does a great job in special teams, that has great return men, that block punts, block kicks, they're well-coached. That means they spend a lot of time on it. And now Southern Miss is faced with a third down and eight. Third down. Kelly running out of time. Dropped at the 47-yard line, Dwayne White. Number 99, Dwayne White. Nice move by Dwayne White, but that play was really set up by Micah Josiah on the other side. He gets off the ball so fast and up the field so quick. Jeff Kelly wants to step up. As soon as he steps up, Dwayne White's waiting for him. They really complement each other, Josiah and White. They definitely do. Number 23, Mark Hallman. Mark Hallman to kick. Zeke Parker is deep. Parker lost the ball! And I think he got it back. He did. A big sigh of relief here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cards take over. First down. 
Let's head down to Alex Flanagan with Derek Nix. Well, as you guys said, I'm here with Derek Nix. You mentioned earlier, Rich, that he is out on a medical red shirt because of a kidney disorder, yet you've been able to travel with the team this whole time. How frustrating has it been for you just to be on the sidelines watching? Well, it's been uh, real frustrating, you know, to the point to where I want to get out there and play and everything. And, uh, I got my health back where I want it to be and uh, working out every day and running. You know, just the hard thing about it is to be patient and waiting on next year. I've been watching you on the sidelines talking to Dwayne Woods all night long, kind of giving him pointers what to do. What have you been saying to him? Well, me and Dwayne kind of started playing at the same time, you know, back in 98 and everything. I'm only trying to give him everything that I see, trying to help him out any way I can, you know, whether I'm on um, pass throwing or running the ball. And are you giving your brother any tips on defense, on the defensive end of things? I don't have anything to say to him during the game. You know, he's kind of uh, uptight and everything, so I just <laughs> walk by him. If he, he says something to me, I'll speak. But other than that, I'm not going to say anything. That's how it should be with a little brother, right? That's right. <laughs> All right, Derek. Good luck. Thanks. Back up to you, Rich. Thanks, Alec. Uh, Alex. Option for Ragon. He's out to the 18-yard line. He's very short, very close to the first down, just short of it. Right, Patrick right, Pruitt made the stop. Patrick Pruitt. Spoken like a true younger brother. Absolutely. Respect your elders and your older brother. I always did. I don't think many of the defensive players have much to say to Tyrone Nix either. They say, they told us yesterday, if needed, he could still strap it on and throw the helmet on and he'd be right back in it. And he looks like, it looks like he does a little lifting in his spare time. He's in pretty good shape. He was a linebacker in the early 90s. Louisville very close. It's going to depend on the spot, one of those left foot, right foot spots. Henry Miller with the carry. And it's a first down, a much needed one for a Louisville offense that has struggled tonight. They've lost Deion Branch, Ronnie Gent, and they're going against Tyrone Nix's defense. He took over as defensive coordinator last year, a defense that lost seven starters. They all went to NFL camps, and they have not missed a beat. What I like is this is how you groom a coordinator. Coaches of linebackers, defensive tackles, defensive backs. He's a coordinator. He deserves it. He's earned his stripes. We're gone. Little pass. Harris made the catch. Harris to the 45, to the 47. Louva's been waiting for someone to step up and make some big plays and Harris makes one and Ragone continues to limp around this field. But this play all starts with quarterback Dave Ragone. Doesn't see what he likes. He rolls out, tries to make something happen. He's visibly limping, but he's not going to come out of that huddle. He's trying to find a way and that's what the coaches told us. He finds a way to win games. And so the miss has brought a lot of people at him all night long. Stallings runs over a couple. And Alex Ray made the stop. Five-yard pickup. Tackle man number 94, Ray and this is when Louisville's been most effective when they can complete a pass, come back to the run, pick up four or five yards on first down. Now they're in position. They're dictating to the defense. It's dealer's choice. You can go back to the run, play action pass, which they've set up by running the ball, or just let David Bell do what he does best, improvise, make a big play, roll and run with the football. Second and five, Ragon throws it away. Alex Ray on the blitz had a hold of Ragone. And that limp and that ankle are really cutting down on his mobility right now. What they wanted out of this play was a play action pass, and they couldn't get it because of the blitz by Alex Ray on the play. But Dave Ragone right there, that is a heads up play. He's out of the pocket, just get rid of it. He has a defender draped on his arm and on his body. He's just dragging him along. And he's just throwing the ball and getting rid of the ball. That's just a heady play by Dave Ragone. Third and five. Ragone will tuck it, head down, and I think he has the first out. He's very close. And that's the fullback in him. That's Alex Ray is the nickelback, and he's saying, what am I doing out here tackling this guy? This guy's a horse. But Dave Ragone, even with the bad ankle, he doesn't see what he likes, and he makes a quick decision right here, takes off, he stumbles a little bit, but he puts his shoulder down and just drives through the tackler. That's what you got to like about him. He's running the ball like he's a fullback, a 250-pound fullback when he takes off with the football, and the defense feels that. They know that. He pounds on the defensive backs throughout the game. 
he has a tendency sometimes to be too aggressive. You can see that he's just short. John L. Smith says, I like that about him. You have to. And the thing that I like about Dave Rodon is not just his toughness, but the decisions that he makes. And if you look at he was short on that third down run for the first down. I'll tell you what, if his ankle's 100%, I guarantee he makes that. He's, he stumbled just before he hit the defender. With a sore ankle, does he keep this one? Yeah. I think he does. I, I think that he's the guy that, if you want a big play on him, you have to have the ball in his hands. So on fourth and inches, we're going trying to quiet the crowd. He'll give it to Henry Miller. And Henry Miller appears to have the first down. That's the second carry by Henry Miller. The first carry is when they were backed up. He had a very nice run of about seven yards, knocked on a couple of defenders and carried them along. And then he gets another carry, carries it for the first down. I'm surprised John L. Smith doesn't use a little bit more of Henry Miller. He can carry the rock. Louisville's best drive was at the end of the first half. They went 67 yards in 14 plays. All they got, though, were three points. They have a pair of field goals. They're down 14-6, but on the move. Russell in motion. Ragon hits the umpire. The umpire goes down. Flags go down, and it's incomplete. That's got to hurt. Who, the umpire? The umpire's going to have a bruise in the morning. Okay. That's got to hurt. It's got to hurt Ragone as well in a different way. And that's been hurting Louisville all night. Penalties, penalties, penalties. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalties declined. Be second down. Jeff Bauer declines the penalty. Harris in motion. Another blitz. And a quick throw. Zeke Parker. Nice move at the 40. Gets to the 49-yard line. Zeke Parker. I think Zeke Parker learned a lesson the first time that they ran that play earlier where his knee was on the ground, he was down. This time he didn't go down with his knees. He bent his knees and went down and got the ball. But, you know, that was a smarter play of catching it and taking it up the field. Good play by the offense of just cutting the lineman down, giving David going some vision. There he squats and gets under the ball instead of going down with his knees, which is a smarter play than he did before when he was down when he caught the ball. So it's, it's a progression. You've got to learn. Third down, six. again. J.R. Russell, the red shirt freshman. No, he caught it. My bad. That was a shoe that came out. It looked like it was the ball. It did. We see it on the replay. That was a shoe that came flying out. I thought it was the ball also. Just such a jarring hit by Chad Williams, but you know, that was a heck of a hit. Watch the hit here at the end. You're going to see bam, look at that. There goes a the shoe right there. I, I, and I thought it was the ball. <laughs> He hit, him, he hit him so hard he knocked him out of his shoe. <laughs> that wasn't it wasn't his shoe. Somebody else has got knocked out, but I saw something rolling out there. I thought it was the ball as well. It was Brooks's shoe, the corner who was chasing him. Maybe that's why he couldn't catch him. Louisville is on the move. 14-6, Southern Miss on top. NFL tonight, Tuesday through Friday at 6:30 p.m. on ESPN2. Be a winner. Take one. You are KG. I am KG. The D's in the dime. Call an audible split belly. You are smart. I am smart. <laughs> 30 10. Where's Watts? There he is. 18 yards out. Get it straight. You gotta believe in yourself. I am powerful. Sega Sports. Rated E for everyone. Is it 5 sixteenths or 9 30 seconds? Does it take a standard socket or metric? What you need is the Gator Grip, the amazing socket that works on over 1,000 nuts, bolts, and fasteners. Watch, no matter what size fastener, nut, bolt, wing nut, square nut, eye bolt, 
hook, most anything. Gator Grip holds on tight to finish the job quickly and easily. Now hang a plant, work under the hood, fix a motorcycle, even set up a Christmas tree stand. Gator Grip replaces a complete toolbox and fits in your pocket, motorcycle, on your belt, or bike. The secret are these retractable steel rods that form to fit most any size or shape. Then locked in place, just turn and tighten. Look, this man is using a regular socket set. He has to change with every bolt. But this man is using the Gator Grip. There's no fumbling, no searching, no changing. He's done. Gator Grip is strong enough to handle up to 150 foot-pounds of torque. So breaking free a rusted nut is no problem. It can remove recessed, odd-shaped, even damaged and stripped nuts and bolts. Amazing. Ow, that's a pain in your hands. But with the Gator Grip, it's a breeze. Why spend hundreds on all these tools? All you need is the Gator Grip that fits over 1,000 nuts, bolts, and fasteners for only $19.95. But it gets better. You'll also receive this high-speed adapter that connects Gator Grip to your power drills and drivers. Drive in metal bolts with ease. Quickly install protective shutters or put together a bicycle super fast. Yours free. Call right now and we'll include this heavy duty ratcheting handle. Keep one in the kitchen drawer for repairing a sink or turning a broken water spigot. Together, it's all you need. Yours free. Gator Grip comes with a lifetime replacement warranty. If it ever breaks or fails, we'll replace it free for life. Call 1-800-418-7755 to order your Gator Grip for just $19.95 or send check or money order to this address. This offer won't last. Parker's got another first down to the 18-yard line. What a wonderful job by quarterback David Gordon. Looking to his right first to look off the defense, then turning back to his left to Zeke Parker. Now watch his hands. He uses great hands here to keep his balance right there to pick up the first down. Wonderful play. By Zeke Parker. In the absence of Dion Branch, Parker is starting to have a pretty big night. Eight catches now for Parker. We're going. Kick strike is incomplete. It's a 14-6 ball game in our ESPN College Football game track. A chance to relive the highlights of this one. The big play in the first half. Chris Johnson's catch and run of a Jeff Kelly throw. He went 73 yards for the touchdown. A little trickeration with Bobby Gardner, the former quarterback, the tight end, throwing to Jeff Kelly for the second score for Southern Miss. The defense has been all over Dave Ragone, but a gutty effort by Ragone. He has his team on the move. Inside the 20 now. Stalling to the 10. To the 8. A nice job by Tony Stallings of following his blockers, particularly John Tay Woodard of getting out in front, leading the blockers, going around. Check out the vision. He's going to follow the big guys. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to follow the guys coming across. Look at this block right there by Jonte Water. He's going to get around the edge. Got a little defensive back. Just knock him out of the way. Pick up some big yardage on the run. But a nice job of Tony Stallings of following the blockers in front of him. 15th play of a drive that's approaching five and a half minutes. Ragone is going to tackle. And with the sore ankle, he couldn't get around the corner. And he couldn't get around Etrick Pruitt. That was on third down and short. He's very close to the first down. Keep an eye on 28 right there, Etrick Pruitt. He's going to follow David Gone. As soon as he runs, he mirrors him down the line of scrimmage. Wherever he goes, I go. Then he just fights through the blockers. What a heck of a tackle by Etrick Pruitt. Ball inside the eight. Louisville needs to get to the seven. The crowd calling for the Cardinal to go for it. They will. Fourth and short. From the eight. Ragon keeps it. Can't. I don't think he has it. Southern Miss has held. On the 17th play of an 82-yard drive, Southern Miss stops Louisville cold. And it's easy to have hindsight on that play, but it's the penetration by the defense. They all penetrated right up in front. Dave Ragone never had a chance. Once he turned his shoulders, he's hit by one linebacker, Rod Davis, then the other linebacker, Roy McGee. He never had a chance on the play. You have to kind of question that call with a bad ankle on fourth and one. Give it to your back. Get some extra blocking in there and slam it up the middle. But you know, he's your go-to guy. you got to put it in the playmaker's hand. 
Now Southern Miss will try to run some Clark fumbled snap. Louisville says they have it. They do. Sophomore Scott Lopez fell on the ball. And Louisville has it right back inside the 10, first and goal. And head coach Jeff Bowers is just grinding his teeth. It's just a bad snap by the center. He snaps it too early. Jim Hicks, the center. These plays are unacceptable. You practice this 500 times a week. Center, quarterback, exchange. It should never happen. You may expect that on the Louisville side because it's your third starting center this year, but not on the Southern Mississippi side of the game. New life for Ragone. Blitz on the way. Ragone's quick throw. Caught. Touchdown. Richard Owens. His first catch of the year. now will go for two down 14 12 we've just entered the fourth quarter what was impressive about that play is Dave Ragone's decision made he did not hesitate he knew he wanted to go to his tight end even though Richard Owens has not caught a ball the entire season he made a decision put some mustard on the ball touchdown here. drop snap Ragone picks it up throws it anyways got his man what a play Are you kidding me? Ties the game at 14. Fourteen, fourteen. Southern Miss Louisville back after this. How would you like to lose that big belly and save big money? Now, there's the Abdur system, designed to aerobically burn fat as it flattens your abs in just minutes a day. And now it's yours for a fraction of the cost. In fact, we guarantee you'll lose up to two inches from your waist in just 10 days or your money back. Look, ab machines strengthen your muscles but won't reduce the size of your waist. And some exercise can actually make your ab muscles bigger. Only the Abdur's unique rotating torso trimmer targets your upper abs, lower abs, obliques, and lower back all in one fat-burning circular motion. You'll flatten your stomach in weeks, not months. We guarantee it. No more straining your back. The Abdur is ergonomically designed to take pressure off your spine as it massages your back. Imagine losing inches as you watch TV. Before I started using the Abdur system, I was really unhappy the way I looked. Ever since I started using the Abdur system, I started seeing immediate results, and I feel so much happier and more confident in everything I do. My belly wasn't getting flat, and that was the area that I really needed to work on. So I started using the Abdur, and within a very short period of time, maybe about a month, I lost almost 10 pounds and 2 inches. This bulky machine costs up to $8,000. The Abdur does the work of all these machines. Millions have sold for five payments of only $29.95. But if you call now, we'll lower the price to five payments of only $19.95. That's a $50 savings. And if you order now, you'll receive the Abdur Nutritional Guide and the Abdovix Motivational Video. A $20 value, free. We guarantee you'll lose at least two inches from your waist in just 10 days or your money back. For rock-hard abs and a slim, sexy waistline, all you have to do is order the Abdur today. Call now to order the Abdur for only five payments of $19.95, plus shipping and handling, and save $50. Plus, get the Abdur Guide and Motivational Video free. To have the Abdur rush to your home, use your checking account just like a credit card. Card. Just have your account number ready or use these major credit cards. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now. New life in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium here in Louisville. 14-14. Southern Miss and Louisville tied. The 12.50 left. After that long 82-yard drive, which ended on a fourth down stop, Louisville picks up the fumble and converts it with a quick touchdown and a wild two-point conversion. Take a look at the touchdown. Tight end Richard Owens does a magnificent job. Here he is. They're going to blitz. He's the hot receiver. He just gets in front of the defender. 
and he's wide open. There it is. Nobody picks him up. It's hot. They blitz. He's wide open. He does a great job of reading his quarterback's eye. Look at the eyes of Dave Ragon. He sees the blitz. He knows where he's going with the football right down the middle to his tight end who catches it in for the score. Now, the two-point conversion, it's a hot potato. Rick Patino wants to know, hey, we can get him for basketball. Drop it once, drop it twice, pick it up, and look. Throws it right by the goalpost. Quarterbacks know when they're in trouble. They throw it right by the goalpost. His receivers are there. That's where J.R. Russell was for the two-point conversion. And now Southern Miss back on offense. Jeremy Freitag made the stop on Dwayne Woods. Second down at about nine. Rich, you go back to that play. Talk about a momentum-shifting play. Not only the touchdown, but really it was a two-point conversion because most of the players see that happen and think you're out of it. But it was great by the redshirt freshman, J.R. Russell, to stay with the play and go to the territory where he was supposed to be. Kelly in trouble. Kelly goes down. Third sack by Louisville. Remember that 82-yard drive, which ended at the seven. The very next play, here's what happened for Southern Miss. Jim Hicks, the center, just doesn't get the ball up high enough for quarterback Jeff Kelly. They fumble the ball. It's recovered by Scott Lopez. The change of momentum started on that play. Southern Miss in a third and long now. Kelly over the middle. Short hopped his receiver. Chris Johnson in the pattern. Three and out. Louisville will get it back. That's one of those passes that should have been completed. Jeff Bauer, the head coach, knows that. Protection was there. The route was there. And that's what he's telling his quarterback right now. The ball was low. Zeke Parker waiting this kick. Dropped it. Picked it up. <laughs> right, well, I guess he saw Ragone. And he figured if Ragone could do it. So with 11.20 left in this ball game, Southern Miss and Louisville at 14 apiece. Here comes Ragone now. And let's see if this momentum carries over. Look at Tyrone Nix, defensive coordinator for Southern Miss. Stallings the carry. Not much of a game. Etrick Pruitt with another stop. Patrick Pruitt's put, put himself together a pretty good game here. He's been all over the entire field. We've talked so much about Tyrone Nix, but Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator at Louisville, with a nice job on that last drive. They went 80 yards and then got the turnover and then stuck it in the end zone. Not only that drive that they were going to put together that Scott Linehan called, he's calling it with a bunch of backups. He's got his starting receiver, Deion Branch, out, his starting tight end, Ronnie Jen out. So he's going to the second and third team players, and he's trying to find out the best things that they do, what they do well. Let's start doing that and implement that in our game plan because obviously we can't use the same plays that we've got in for a Deion Branch. Third down conversions tonight, it's been a struggle. But they've really been long third downs, haven't they? They haven't been easy ones to make. <laughs> they've a long way to go to get those third down conversions. Ooh, that one in and out of the hands of Chad Williams on the coverage of J.R. Russell. And it's three and out for Louisville. And Southern Miss will get it back. This game's a battle of the wills, it seems, at times. For about a three-minute spurt, the momentum will go to Southern Mississippi, then it'll turn for Louisville, then it'll turn back. And I'm surprised that Southern Miss hasn't gone back to the screens. They've had huge success with their screens. Kenneth Johnson ready to return it. Talachka, remember, had one blocked by Pruitt. And this is a good punt. Oh, he got it. He caught it. And then arriving on the 
passing was Brian Gaines. Now, if you design punt coverage on the blackboard, you're supposed to punt at high hang time, and you're supposed to get down there with your outside guys. That's exactly what Brian Gaines does. Doesn't give him a chance. The ball's bobbled right there. Southern Miss and Louisville all tied at 14. You know the rules. It's the law of the jungle. This month, Pride Fighting goes wild with beasts from the east as natural enemies face off for survival of the fiercest. Former UFC champion Don Fry makes his Pride debut in an explosive return to the martial arts, gunning for Mark Coleman's glory. Get ready to roar when Pride Fighting unleashes beasts from the east. Playing this month on direct ticket pay-per-view on direct TV, unrehearsed, uncaged. Hey, what's up? I just ordered Total Choice Platinum from Direct TV. Now I get over 160 channels, more than 30 premium movie channels, including HBO, Stars, and Showtime, plus over 20 specialty and regional sports networks, all for one great monthly price. Total Choice Platinum is the best Direct TV experience for the best value. Just call 1 800 Direct TV. You only live once, why miss a single channel? Total Choice Platinum, better than a breath of fresh air. And Wednesday Night Hockey. Mike McDonald and the Stars look to pay back last year's playoff sweep against Chris Pronger and the Blues. Stars Blues Wednesday at 8 on ESPN. Stars and Stripes above Louisville, Kentucky. At the controls, Captain Dick Esch from Pompano Beach, Florida. Giving you the beautiful pictures tonight. Rich Waltz along with Mark May and Alex Flanagan at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium for what has been an entertaining ball game in Conference USA. So they miss Louisville all tied at 14. Jeff Kelly. He'll go down. Michael Josiah. A difference maker. Number 17, Kelly. Fourth sack of Kelly tonight. And the reason why this play is successful is because Michael Josiah stays with the play. They try to want to run a boot. He's just going to continue to fight all the way through the play. Goes right by Jeremy Bridges. That's just hustle getting to the play and crossing the offensive lineman's face. Second and 14. Kelly over the middle. It's picked off. Anthony Floyd to the 20. One, one. They quickly move the safeties. Stick and pick. Curry Burns is stick. Anthony Floyd is pick. He had 10 last year, only his second this year but two games in a row. Last year, he had three interceptions against Southern Miss. Here he is. He just cuts right in front, breaks on the ball in front of the receiver. He's reading the quarterback's eyes, Jeff Kelly. As soon as Jeff Kelly looks his direction, look at his eyes. Telegraph, telegraph, telegraph. Look at the quarterback now. Boom. Break on the ball in front of the wide receiver, Leroy Handy. What a beautiful play by Anthony. Tony Stallings. Hit and drop by Roy McGee, who is the cousin of Marshall Falk. Out of Mandeville, Louisiana. John L. Smith, his defense since the start of 2000, 36 interceptions. Most of the NCAA. Second down. These defenders know how to get to the football. The crowd was not happy with that play call. They haven't been able to run the ball the last couple of series, and they need to get positive yardage. They're going the wrong way running the football. With own shotgun. More flags. More penalty yardage against Louisville. I, I think he meant the other offense with his other arm, the offense <laughs> to the right.
Second and 17. The draw goes nowhere. Richard, I'm going to tell you why this play doesn't work. When a quarterback has a quarterback draw, he has to set back and allow the rushers to get upfield. Dave we're going to watch him here. He's in the shotgun. He needs to set back, allow the rushers to get upfield, and then pick a spot. Right there, he doesn't have a chance to pick a spot. Too much rush, they get into his face. He needs a better job of protection up front, but he needs to let the rushers to get upfield, step up, then make his run to the front. Eric Scott stopped him. Third and 19. The gun was hit and throws. J.R. Russell made the catch. Someone had a Ragone's hand on Ragone when he delivered that ball. J.R. Russell. That's just the strength of Dave Ragone. It's not nearly enough for the first down, but it certainly gets Louisville in much better field goal range for Nathan Smith, who was hit two tonight. From 48 and from 28. This is 36 yards. Seven of nine on the season. of 10 on the season. A big three points for Louisville. They break the tie and lead Southern Miss 17-14. Own the Basic Instinct Special Limited Edition DVD packaged in a collectible see-through ice case with a free collectible pen and hot footage the director was forced to cut. She didn't like it too much. Also available, the Total Recall Special Edition DVD. Buy them both today. The Compact Presario 5000T has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. For music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, a powerful Intel Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $899. That's for all your financial buffs. Call 1-800-331-7390 to buy now and upgrade to a DVD or CDRW drive free. Plus, get free shipping. Cal Ripken. If you missed his Sports Century profile the first time, he's always trying to get the edge. Catch the encore presentation on ESPN Classic. He changed the game. Cal set the standard for big shortstops by showing up every day. It wasn't that Cal Ripken didn't get hurt. He was hurt all the time. Cal Ripken, Sports Century, the top 50 and beyond, 8 Eastern Friday on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1 800 Classic today. Did I go too far? And we're back. College Game Day, presented by Discover Card, Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Louisville down 14-6 in this one, on top 17-14. Here is a big play by Anthony Floyd. And what he does, he reads the quarterback's eyes, he breaks on the ball right here. He's looking for the ball, looking at the eyes, comes up with the interception. Number 11, Tim Blackwell, for the Golden Eagles. The interception in return set up Nathan Smith's 36-yard field goal. And suddenly, this stadium is jumping again. Blackwell from the one. Demolished at the 14-yard line. And Louisville has momentum right now. Southern Miss down three, seven and a half minutes left. Last year, it was a tight game at the half. And speaking of difference makers, Anthony Floyd made quite a difference last year, Mark. And he comes up with big plays against the defense. Here's an interception in the end zone. This next one, he's going to pick off, take it back. It's a pick six. He takes it back to the house, Anthony Floyd, and yet he's not done. Here's the third one of the day. He intercepted three picks, three interceptions last year against Southern Mississippi. And Southern Miss, Dwayne Woods. Hard going over the left side, a gain of two. So four in his last two meetings. He ended up with ten last year. Do you think he likes to see the Southern Miss quarterback step on the field? Four in two years, four in two games. There's a Southern Miss quarterback for you. Here's a good one, Jeff Bauer. Second and eight. 
boy, look at Josiah, who had a good jump. Kelly escapes him to the 20 yard line. Michael Josiah looked like he was shot out of a cannon. And he's been doing that the entire evening. That's one of the things that he does so well. He comes off the ball. He's watching. Keep an eye right there. Look how fast he gets up the field. The offensive tackle doesn't have a chance to even get set and turn around. He's already by it. That's explosiveness and quickness. And he gained 40 pounds since last year. He's played well tonight. Third and four. Kelly deflected and incomplete. Dwayne White got a hand on it. Nice job by Dwayne White. They ran a stun on that side. They ran a tee stunt where the tackle goes outside. The end comes around. Dwayne White got penetration, got his hands up. Mark Holman backed up to his five-yard line. Zeke Parker is deep. Another good long kick. Parker going back on it in the 28. Louisville wants a flag. I don't think they're going to get one. It happened right in front of the Louisville bench. 50-yard kick, 8-yard return. Tonight and every night, Sports Center at 11 on ESPN. Big unit comes up big. Yankees and Mariners preview. Game one tomorrow. And the clutch playoff performer. That's the question of the night. Rich Eisen, Stuart Scott on the way on ESPN. Here's another look at the play at the end of the play with Zeke Parker. It's a little push out of bounds. Tony Stallings. And Stallings is wrestled out of bounds after an 11-yard pickup. Slowly and surely, Tony Stallings is kind of wearing this defense down a bit. He is a smart player, knows the entire offense. He's a senior, good pass protector, can catch a ball in the backfield. But what I like, when he runs the ball, he puts the ball in the right hand, which is his left hand close to the, close to the sidelines, and he stiff arms with his right. Now that's a smart player. Protect the football. You've got the lead. Play smart. Tony Stallings is that type of player. Stallings up the middle, right across midfield. Louisville has scored both of their touchdowns off of turnovers tonight. Stallings has had an interesting career here. Linebacker, 54 tackles. He's a pretty good linebacker there. I don't know why they put him on the other side of the ball. Look at my jar in there. It's not very good, but he moved to running back as a backup. Last year, 800 yards. This year, came into the game averaging four and a half yards a carry. Well, they had Chad Lee, Jeremy Freitag, and Michael Brown in the, in the program. Those are three pretty good linebackers right now. Yeah, maybe it was a good move. Okay. <laughs> and that play was ugly from the start. Yeah, and a nice play. So then misses Darius McKenzie. They try to run the counter, and Antoine McKenzie, Antoine Sims trips over the center on this play, and that's where it started. They just allow penetration to get in the backfield for McKenzie to make the tackle. McKenzie, the sophomore. Neither team has chewed it up on the ground. 24 and 42. That's, that's not what you need. You want to be able to move the change. We're going with the blitz on the way. Little pump looking for Parker D. Good coverage by Greg Brooks. Flag is down. Two of them. Back near Ragone. And that's the area of holding. Holding the offense. Penalties are refused. Fourth down. So Tidlachka will come in on fourth and 11 now. Kenneth Johnson is deep. So the miss starting to anxiously watch the clock. It's 10 penalties now on Louisville. Three of them have been declined. Three others have been declined by Southern Miss. Johnson waves him away, makes the pickup. 
and scampers out of bounds. 413 left in this one, a three-point Louisville lead. Welcome to the annual ESPN the Magazine Sports Mascot Picnic. Every year, pro and college mascots come from all over the country to swap stories, compare dance steps, nice moves, Billy, and talk about how much they love ESPN the Magazine and show off the free fleece pullover we give to every new ESPN the Magazine subscriber. You know more mascots subscribe to ESPN the Magazine than any other sports magazine in the world? Hey, here's the college guys. Fellas, who's your ESPN the Magazine favorite? They're so into Dick Vitale. Call now for ESPN the Magazine. Sports the way it ought to be. Bigger, bolder, with previews, predictions, inside information, and attitude you can only get from ESPN. Every new subscriber gets this ESPN the Magazine fleece pullover absolutely free. These high-quality fleece pullovers are extra large and roomy. Fits all shapes and sizes, from devils to penguins. And the new charcoal gray color looks good on anyone, even if your skin tone skews slightly blue or orange. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues one year for just a dollar an issue. That's 71% off the new stand price. Hey, if you're a sports mascot or simply a regular human who loves sports, pick up the phone and call for ESPN the magazine and your free fleece pullover. 1-800-605-8228. Four thirteen left in Louisville. Cardinals with a 17-14 lead. Etrick Pruitt almost got himself another one. Remember I said some guys have a knack for this. Etrick Pruitt has three block punts the last two games. Here he splits both protectors again. Look at this. Just misses another one. That would have been a sport. I, I think he kicked it under his arm. He did. I mean, that, that's just outstanding effort. That's all it takes is having a knack for it and give an effort. And that's what Etrick Pruitt does. And now Southern misses offense. Has to move the football. Down three, running out of time. Jeff Kelly. Throwing on the run. Got his man. A catch at the 30-yard line. Chris Johnson. 13-yard pickup. Now, Rich, that's the first time that I've seen Jeff Kelly in Southern Mississippi on a design play run a sprint out. Very effective play. I like that type of play. You break contain. Your quarterback can see down the field. He's only going to have his one receiver out there, but it gives them an opportunity to move the pocket and let the defense know that he has the ability to do that. Shotgun on first and ten. His own 30. Blitz on the way. Kelly gets it off. And it's caught by Chris Johnson again. Josh Minkins with the hit. It's a gain of seven. A nice play of concentration by Chris Johnson. He knows he's going to get hit on this play. He's going to get nailed by Josh Minkins. He comes back for the ball, goes up for it. He knows he's going to get hit, turns around, and just takes one right in the mouth from Josh Minkins. Nice play of concentration pulling on the foot. Second and three. Josiah got a piece, and that was enough to send Kelly down. Michael Josiah is so fast off the ball, it's like he shot out of a can. It's almost like he's a sprinter. Take a look right here. Watch how fast he gets off the ball. Boom, he's off the ball before, before the, the offensive tackle gets back. That's how quick he is. He's 270 pounds, and as soon as the ball snaps, boom, look how quick he is. It's almost like an instant. It's a reaction. That's in Canada. You don't see that in many defensive players. He arrives in the backfield faster than the shotgun snap. Kelly now. Wide open is Leroy Handy. Across the 45, Handy's got a first down, and Southern Miss moves the sticks. Last four possessions. That's since the touchdown drive. Look at the yardage. Zero, minus two, minus four, six yards. You need to get some consistency and move the chains. They talked about just getting first downs and move the chains, but they haven't been able to do that their last four possessions. Clock stopped as he was out of bounds. First and ten. Kelly takes a sack. Dwayne White and Chad Lee on the pursuit, and it was Lee who caught him. 
Now when Chad Lee turns the corner, he turns to Jetson. It's like a fresh, it's like, it's like a wild dog after fresh meat. Once he turns the corner, keep an eye, he's gonna turn the corner. Once he turns the corner, watch him turn it on. He's gonna go out there, it's a T stun. He goes all the way around, look at this, right there. Turn on the Jets, boom, come down with a sack. He was an offensive lineman to start his career here. Now he's a linebacker. Kelly, in trouble. Steps out of it. Keeps it. Dives out of bounds at midfield. It'll bring up third down and a long seven. And this defensive front of Louisville, they know the Southern Miss offense has to throw the ball, so they're just pinning their ears back and going for the quarterback. You haven't seen this much pressure out of the Louisville front for the entire game until this last series. They know, hey, it's time to go after the quarterback. They're not going to stop us. Someone will get there. They do a great job of putting pressure on the quarterback. Southern Miss with two timeouts left. Face with third down. Obviously four down territory. And Jeff Kelly uses a timeout. So Kelly uses a timeout. They've got one left. They need about 20 yards to get into field goal range. 17-14 Louisville. Anything in the mail? Hmm. Joe. Hey, look at this. What? A credit card preview. You know what that means. We already have a credit card. But it's pre-approved. What do you want? A trip to Bermuda? The Caymans? Yeah. Or uh, a nice dinner around. You know what I want? A house. Using credit wisely is the first step toward owning a home. Call for the free guide on credit from the Fannie Mae Foundation and for a list of lenders and credit counselors. He claims to be not human, visitor from another planet. I'd like to begin by asking you if you know why you're here. Is the space map here yet? Why did you want to come to our planet? You're really from up there? Do you have a family on k -Pax? What's going on? How could you know this? You don't believe him. Your produce alone has been worth the trip. K-Pax. Rated PG-13. At theaters Friday, October 26th. A buck 40 left. 17-14 Louisville on top of Southern Miss. When these two schools meet in Conference USA, it usually means something. The winner in three of the last five have won the championship. And right now, Southern Miss with third down and eight. One timeout left, about 20 yards out of field goal range. They've had trouble protecting Kelly. He lost the ball! Louisville's got it! Chad Lee to the 20! He's 10! To the 5! He's in! Out at the 2, they'll call it! Number four, sack number six. Bobby LeFew the hit. Chad Lee returns it. And Louisville right now with a minute 27 left. First and goal. Stallings. Touchdown, Cardinal. This is just not being denied. Watch the offensive lineman get a great push. Jonte Woodard, but Tony Stallings gets hit at the goal line. He's saying, there's no way you're keeping me out of the end zone. And he just powers his way in. Now, here's the stack. Keep an eye on the stunts. They're double stunting all over. Look at these guys. They're just going every place with their stunts to try to confuse the offensive line. The few comes around. It's an ET stunt. Comes all the way around. Sacks the quarterback. Comes from behind. The ball's on the ground. It's picked up. 
Chad Lee. He runs it down. Big number 73, Jeremy Bridges, jumps on his back and takes him out at the two-yard line. Well, what a play by Chad Lee. Picking up that ball, taking it down the field to play, but the pressure, the stunts inside by the Louisville defensive front. Bobby LaFew coming around on the stunt, knocking the ball loose, and Chad Lee being Johnny on the spot, picking it up and taking it back to the room. Extra point good. Louisville now 24-14. All three Louisville touchdowns have come off of turnovers. Southern Miss at one point in this game controlled this game. They did. A 14-6 lead. They were controlling both lines of scrimmage. And suddenly it turned. And I think it was that 82-yard drive that even though it resulted in a fourth down stop inside the 10, I think that changed the whole ball game because Louisville got a fumble back and from that point on they've owned the game. And I think what that drive did is it set the tempo. Louisville came out and said, we're going to hit you right in the mouth. We're going to throw some passes. We're going to control the line of scrimmage. And that's what they did in that drive. They come up with a fumble, go in and score after that. And you're right. I think that drive just showed Southern Miss that, hey, you've got a tough defense, but we're going to take the ball and we're going to show you we have a pretty good offense also. Blackwell from the 11. Get to see. And then is rolled down at the 28-yard line by Robert McCune, the redshirt freshman out of Mobile, Alabama. Robert McCune. Second half scoring for Louisville. You look at the first three games this season, they just rolled over opponents. They've had problems the last couple of weeks. And tonight you look at 18 points to 7 points. They just have a knack, and that's a sign of a good football team to come out, set the tempo. Dave were going in the second half. Playing tough. I talked about him as a tough competitor. I talked about him as a legitimate tough guy. But going out there, hobbling around on the bad ankle, he showed his teammates that he's a winner, and they knew that. And now America knows that he's a heck of a quarterback in the league. Kelly on first and ten. They're going to get him again. Josiah, his third sack, the team's seventh. Sack. Number two, Josiah. And Rich, this is a situation where. They've got to put all the wide receivers out. The offensive linemen have to hang in there one-on-one -on -one block, and they're not going to get any help. And the defense is just pinning their ears back and going for the quarterback. And it's one of those situations that I've been in as a player. Not a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun when you're behind, and everyone knows you have to throw the football. Second down. Batted down. 13. And for the Louisville defense at this point, there's more bounce in their step, more energetic, more enthusiasm, more than we've seen the entire game. Now they're into the game because obviously they know they've got the lead. It'll be tough for Southern Miss to come back. But you're just seeing their coaches and what they can do. Their defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators, both of their coordinators. You look at Chris Smealan on the defensive side of the ball, what he's been able to do with this defense. He got fired up in the fourth quarter. That's what he needed. Nice catch by Woods to the 30, and it will bring up fourth down. We've talked so much, and it's really Southern Miss's defense, the headliner in this one. But you're right about Chris Smeelan and the Louisville defense. They've kind of stolen the thunder. Southern Miss will burn their final timeout with 23 seconds left. And what's most impressive is what Chris Smeelan has been able to do with this defense. One starting senior on this entire starting defense, and that's Jeremy Freetag, the middle linebacker. So that just shows you he's got a lot of young players, but there is one heck of a future in store for the defense in Louisville. And there's Freytag right there, the senior out of Sacramento. Sacramento City College. This, this is a team that starts a sophomore at one corner, a redshirt freshman at the other corner. Its best defensive lineman is a sophomore in Dwayne White. Don't forget about pick and stick. Hey, pick and stick were big tonight. Pick, Anthony Floyd, had a momentum-turning interception tonight. And stick has been in on a lot of hits. But it, it should be noted that Tyrone Nix and his defense played well here tonight. They were simply worn down. They didn't get a lot of help from their offense in the second half. And you look at those 24 points. 
21 of those 24 points came off of turnovers. So basically, it put their offense in a bad, or their defense in a bad position, but their defense has done an outstanding job, and they're going to be back. And, you know, he's just a tremendous young talent as a coach. Kelly's throw in a crowd incomplete. And this ball game is just about done. Those that hung through the cold will have a chance to celebrate now. I think the Louisville Cardinal fans definitely got their money's worth. You know, they saw what they came to see, a, a gritty quarterback. You know, numbers aren't very impressive, but what Dave Ragone has been able to do with this offense, he is a true leader. And he just wills his team to win football games, and he finds a way to win games. And even when we talk to, Missis to Southern Mississippi's head coach, Jeff Bauer, he said he kind of reminded him of Brett Favre. Gritty, the players respect him. He has that air about him. He tries to find a way to win, and he wills himself and his teammates to win football games. And he coached Brett Favre at Southern Mississippi. Ragon to a knee. A gutty performance by Ragon and this Louisville team. John L. Smith and the Cardinals are now 6-1, 2-0 oh in Conference USA, and an uncustomary second loss in the conference for Southern Miss. They're now 3-2 and 1-2 and and in the conference. And Louisville certainly hoping they'll get two of their weapons back. They did this without Ronnie Gent and without Dion Branch. And that's incredibly impressive, and particularly for their offensive quarter, Scott Linehan, to come out and do that with freshmen and redshirt freshmen and sophomores and players that really hadn't played. Big win for Louisville. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan, who's with John L. Smith. Well, John L. Smith, we talked about offense, getting the offense back on track tonight. You were able to do that in the end of this game, but clearly the defense came up big. Six sacks, four turnovers. Right. What do you think? I mean, oh, I tell you what, you can't be a championship football team unless you play great defense. And we're starting to play great defense. We're starting to mature as a defense. I'm so proud of our kids and our coaches for sticking in there, sticking with our game plan and coming out second half and turning up the juice a little bit. And uh, I'm just proud of them. I couldn't be uh, happier. So I'm proud of the defense, proud of the offense. Dave Ragone is a, hey, what a fighter. I'll tell you what, he got hit a few times, but he's hung in there. He's a great player. He looks banged up. You go. You have another couple other players, big players yeah. that are banged up. Yeah. But you're going to have 11 days off before you face Cincinnati. Right. Are those guys going to be okay? Well, Dion should be fine. I, I I don't know that Ronnie Gent will. We're going to have to wait and see on him. Neither one of them was, should need surgery. We'll just have to wait and see how quick they come back. But we need them. Okay, Coach Smith. Thank you thank so much. You. Congratulations, Rich. He's smiling because he has a big win, and now he is six and one and two and zero oh in Conference USA as Louisville comes back and beats Southern Miss, 24 to 14. On ESPN two, world's strongest man coming up, or flip over to ESPN four Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN.